Podcast, welcome in for another episode. Breaking news to get the show started. A lawsuit's been filed against Prince Andrew. We have all the details, plus more fallout from Governor Cuomo. A couple of resignations, a couple of accusations, and Chris Cuomo is still a douchebag. Uh, Nick Cannon is fathering kids faster than anybody else I know. Quentin Tarantino has cut his mom out. We have a new Barbie doll that has to do with uh, the person who came up with the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, businesses are bringing back the whole mask thing. MLB and Barstool Sports might be making a deal. And uh, huge music news to end the show. Frankie huge. Sears here. What What's up, happening? Dog? Uh, same old. How we doing? It's a Monday. We got a show. Let's get into Prince Andrew. Let's not. Uh, lawsuit filed just m- moments ago, literally moments ago. Uh, right here in Manhattan, um, it's uh, Virginia Roberts Jeffrey against Prince Andrew. Uh, she's getting this in just under the wire uh, before the statute of limitations expires. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of interesting because as I was going through the whole lawsuit, I was like, oh, I wonder why now, you know, because th- we've known about the two of them for the longest time. Remember that crazy interview where they were like, do you know this girl? And he's like, I've never met her in my life. And then the woman was like, yeah, but what about this picture of you and her? And Ooh. he's like, I don't remember that. And he looked awful in that BBC interview. Yeah. Um, so I we mean, noted about this yeah. for a while. Um, but um, I found this interesting. They have been trying to, they by they, I mean Virginia and her lawyers, have been trying to get Prince Andrew to just have any sort of contact with them, negotiation, out of court settlement, whatever the case may be, um, for about five years. Hmm. And he couldn't been, do anything. He's been stonewalling them for five yeah. years. Now you can't leave. Now you just can't leave. Yeah, exactly. Uh, see you in court, fella. So the last correspondence they sent to them was about a month or so ago, and it basically said, look, the next thing that we're going to do is file this suit uh, in Manhattan. And uh, still no response from uh, Prince Andrew. So just moments before the start of the podcast here, a couple hours ago, uh, we've got the uh, court filing today, which contains a copy of the photograph of her standing beside Prince Andrew, along with references to flight records from Epstein's private planes that indicate you're free, was a frequent passenger to destinations in the United States and abroad while she was under the age of 18. She contends in the lawsuit that Prince, uh, the prince engaged in the alleged sexual acts with her, knowing that she was uh, a trafficking victim being forced to engage in acts with him, and that he was aware of her age. She contends she did not consent to these acts with the prince. Um, in, consent or not. Well, true. Still no good. Yeah, that's true. Under 18, you actually can't legally consent. No. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey was compelled by express or implied threats by Epstein, Maxwell, and or Prince Andrew to engage in these acts with the prince and fear death or physical injury to herself or another and other repercussions for disobeying Epstein, Maxwell, and Prince Andrew due to their powerful connections, wealth, and authority, the suit alleges. So now he has to appear, right? I mean, that's... You just have to, you have to come in. I, you know, I mean, I, I Is that think how that works. I think so. Don't we have a deal with England? I mean, don't we have to extradite criminals? I mean, he's not forth? under arrest. He is not. But it is a lawsuit. It's not really, a, it's not, he's not under arrest, but there is a lawsuit against him. Does he have to show up? He might not even have to show up for a lawsuit, right? Yeah, I don't. That's a great question. I, there's got to be some response. I mean, I don't think you got to be. You got to respond, but yeah, I don't think he could just never go. Like, I don't think he can. I don't think he can just not ever go back to America. Like, I don't think that'll get him right well, out of this. No, no, no. I mean, like, if someone sues, it's a lawsuit, right? It's not. It's like... a. It's a civil lawsuit. Okay, so if it's a lawsuit, like, let's say someone's suing, I don't know, Tom Hanks for whatever. Tom Hanks doesn't have to show up in court. He sends whoever, his lawyers. Right, but if it goes to trial, he's got to go. I guess. Let us know in the comments, because we obviously <laughs> don't know. <laughs> Not sure how that works. I mean, yeah, well, I would I'd, assume he'd have to show up, because that's just the way you handle something. But 
some of these people that have a gazillion dollars don't show up to stuff like this. That's true. But I think you have to. I think he's got to, like, if this goes to, it, I think he has to. Um, I don't think he has to until there's a, you know, until, until you really have to. Like, he could send representatives. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, the, yeah, he might be able to send, yeah. I, I believe. But I think you got to, I think, like, this is going to, you know. Oh, I'm I sure mean, it will. Uh, she previously settled two federal lawsuits that she filed in connection with her allegations that she was recruited by Maxwell and Epstein. Um, she settled with Epstein in 2009 and reached an out of court settlement in her defamation claim against Maxwell in 2017. There were no admissions of wrongdoing in either case and the financial terms of the settlements were not disclosed. Maxwell, in deposition testimony in the defamation case, denied Jeffrey's allegations and described her accuser as an absolute liar. Uh, Maxwell said during the 2016 deposition, she has lied repeatedly often and is just an awful fantasist. Fantasist. Fantasizer? Yeah, I guess so. That's, uh, I get it's, I mean, it's besides playing, you know, the, the, the the manifests of the flights and everything and that one photo i mean i hope she has what else can she she it's their her word against theirs no um i wonder if that yeah well it, unless there was witnesses that can witnesses, testify yeah that's true it's got to be too i mean an island full of people you, you, you would you would think they'd be able to scrape up a witness or two uh, her lawyer told ABC News today that it is his hope that the lawsuit finally leads to Prince Andrew agreeing to answer questions under oath. Uh, he said, it's one thing to ignore me. It's another thing to ignore the judicial process of the state of New York and the United States. If Prince Andrew does not take seriously the rule of law in this country, he is being very ill-advised. This is a serious lawsuit and the court will take it seriously. We will take it seriously. If he doesn't take it seriously, it is at his peril. I mean, this has basically been their playbook, the Prince Andrew people. They've been keeping him. He doesn't make any public appearances anymore. They've been keeping him quiet. They don't say anything. We just talked about Sarah Ferguson going out, and all people wanted to talk about was Andrew to her. Right. I mean, I, I don't I don't think that they can try and stonewall this for very long, the, the royal family, I mean. I, I don't yeah, think how, they can I mean, do that. How long can they duck this thing? Like, now with this lawsuit, especially... It's, he's got to he's got to answer some questions. I mean, he's got to leave the, the the palace at some point, wherever the hell he lives. Yeah, no, he's been hiding out in the in the palace. Um, let me see here. Uh, her lawyer also said if she does this is basically uh, this has to do with the statute of limitations in New York. Uh, the expiration date was coming up soon for alleged victims of childhood abuse to file civil claims that might otherwise. Uh, be barred by statutes of limitations. Um, do, 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 do. If she doesn't do it now, she would be allowing him to escape any accountability for his actions. This is David Boyes, the uh, attorney for Virginia Jufree. And he said that Virginia is committed to trying to avoid situations where rich and powerful people escape any accountability for their actions. The lawsuit seeks unspecified comp compensatory and punitive damages and accuses Andrew of assault and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Uh, 20 years ago, Prince Andrew's wealth, power, and position and connections enabled him to abuse a frightened, vulnerable child uh, with no one there to protect her. It is long time past for him to be held to account. Um, a spokesperson for Prince Andrew said there would be no comment on the suit. Not no comment. But that there would be no comment, which is different. There, what do you mean? How? Because if I say no comment, that means I have no comment. If I say there will be no comment, that means there will, there won't be a comment. Yeah, don't expect any comment. Well, that's fine. You don't have to comment to us. Just comment in court. You don't have mm -hmm. to tell the press. Just, just go settle it in court. As long as that's you're commenting there, fine. You don't have to tell the press anything. To go to court. Yeah. And it's totally, I mean, that now it has to be New York talking to England. Hey, uh, we, uh, we need some, one of your guys over here. You got to send know. them over. How, how does that work? You got to send them over? I mean, what, 
does, it, does it get handled over there? Probably not. Uh, the um, and and here's the thing too. It's not just with Virginia's lawyers. Like there was a time where I'm trying to find it in my notes here. The uh, the U.S. attorney in Manhattan, he called out um, Andrew because he said, you know, we need to talk to you. And they were like, oh, yeah, OK, we're putting stuff together. We'll be in touch. And then he never did. And so um, Jeffrey Berman is his name. Jeffrey Berman publicly called out the prince a few months ago, or I should say a few months later uh, after he first said that uh, they would be, you know, they wanted to talk to him and he would be willing to cooperate. He called him out for failing to live up to his stated promise. At a press conference in front of Epstein's New York mansion early last year, Berman said Prince Andrew has provided zero cooperation. Like, it's only a matter, again, I, I don't, it's only a matter of time, no? I feel like it, sh it should be. I mean, now that, now that our government is involved, it's, now it's like, we got to settle this. You know, we got to hash this out somehow. Yeah. Uh, wh what do you do? I mean, that's, that's your royalty against one of our people, one of our citizens. It's like, and they're big time about protecting that family, like, the, no, to, no, you know, against anything. I mean, the family is, but what about the, their judicial system? I mean, at some point, what, is it going to be Biden on the phone with the queen going, hey, yeah, put your son uh, on the phone. <laughs> but yeah, put your son on the phone. Send it a plane for the kid there. So uh, have him ready. Have his bags back. Yeah. What do you I mean, that's a that's I don't know if that's ever if something like this has ever happened. Where, yeah, we have to someone in America files suit against someone in, in a, especially the royal family. That's, I don't think that's ever happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, yeah. That, what do you what's the procedure for that? If there even is one. Okay, let's see here. Uh UK US extradition treaty. Under the new treaty, the allegations of the, the allegations of the US government will be enough to secure extradition of people from the UK. However, if the UK wants to extradite someone from the US, evidence to the standard of reasonable demonstration of guilt will still be required. This is a new extradition treaty. Uh, I believe that was this year. Is it possible it was assigned in 21? Hmm. This is according to statewatch.org. Okay, so we, we could send some... Uh, so wait, in order for someone to be extradited from there to here, we just have to say, send them over. Yeah. The other way around, they have to prove guilt. Yes. Wow. They got the uh kind of, we kind of gave him the shaft a little bit on that one. Yeah, but that's the thing like it's you're talking about your average you know, criminal, right. not the queen's the prince. son. <laughs> right. You right. know, I, I wonder what kind of stall tactics are going to be are going to be still a citizen. There. He's still Yeah, there's going to be stalling and whatever, but he's going to have to lawyer up at some point. Yeah, this, I mean, there's no, there's no getting around it. It's this is gonna hang on him until it's settled, or whatever. Because when you think about it, the son of a bitch has already been ducking this for five years. You, you know? Can you imagine? Let's let's run uh, let's run it through a little. He comes over. They go to court. He's found guilty. Now what? Does he go to jail? He goes well, to no, our prison. It, it's um, I I don't think so. I think it's civil. It's, I don't oh, think you go to just, jail. It's just monetary. It's just yeah. compensation of some, of some kind. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the thing is, is, you know, similar to, remember, like in the OJ thing, he got off on the criminal yeah, and, and got and nailed on the pay. civil. Right. You know, I think it's the same thing. It's that, not moral That's victory, so but it's a, it's a victory. That's such a weird thing. Like, what's, why are they two different? I mean, if you're guilty, you're guilty. If you're innocent, you're I don't get how you could be guilty in one and innocent in another. That's just my ignorance. I, I'm sure there's a reason for it. It is your ignorance. You're right. I don't know the reason. Do you know the reason? Uh, no, we'll follow, but we'll okay. follow this. I know that. I know we'll Good. be all over this because, I mean, you got to do something. Because here's the thing. Now, tomorrow, 
there's going to be a press conference somewhere in the UK over something, you know, planting a tree or opening up a new hospital or something. And there's going to be someone who's like, ah, uh, right. Something happened uh, in the States. Exactly. Got to address this. Somebody's going to ask a question about something. Yeah. No, this ain't going away. No, not not whatsoever. Uh, as we get into the Governor Cuomo stuff, Frank, but we'll we'll continue to follow it. So again, make sure you subscribe to the pod, uh, Facebook and YouTube, and hit the bell notification so you know when we go live. Of course, it's always important, uh, and hit the thumbs up on this. You, you know, uh, it's a, such a small thing. We get thousands of people watching, and like like two hundred. Yeah, yeah. It's like what? Just hit the. Th- How hard is it to hit the thumbs up? It's literally one click. It helps the channel. It does help a lot. Yeah. We're not begging. Um, We're just on our knees a little bit here. And, of course, uh, on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, Google Pod, all the podcast networks were there, whichever one you prefer. Uh, Now, uh, Janine is not here because she is sick. I think she's come down with a case of Atlantic City-itis. This was the, the, I'm not going to make it tonight. Thanks for the heads up. (laughs) The two-hour notice <laughs> text message we got, uh, which is unfortunate because I got one of the greatest emails ever from a listener. Okay. And I can't share it with no, either one you of you. You can't do that. Until you're both No, no, present. you can't do that. It is, you can't tell me one of the greatest emails ever and then not share it. It's so good. This, the good. idea. Give me the that, subject. Um, was there a subject on the in the thing? It's not really a subject. All right, give me the subject matter. It has to do with you and JSAPs. Somebody wrote me something, and I was just like, "This, if we were, if we were hiring Frank, if we were hiring for a fourth person to work on the show, hmm. I would have immediately given this person the job." Even if they were like, if they have no editing experience, no whatever, I would just have been like, based on this one email. Just based on this one email, I would have been like, you have a job. Well, let's go on the Anthony on Air podcast. Out with it. I can't say it now because she's not here. I Why? Ha- it, it's something that has to be said to the both of you at the same time. I don't think it does. It does. I can't imagine a situation it's great. where that is necessary. It's so. Great. She'll hear it once she watches this episode. No, but it ha- you'll when you hear it, when you both hear it, you'll be like, you were right. We had to both hear this at the same time. Mm, I very rarely think you're right. So, <laughs> All right, let's talk about all the people no, that are come resigning. On. Come on. I, I really can't. I, w- I wouldn't have teased it then if I knew you Can were you say upset. why, though? Why it's not, uh, why you can't tell, about, uh, tell one another, you know, we have to have both of us on? I can't say it, but other than you both have to hear it at the same time. Is it positive or negative? No, it's positive. It's positive. Yeah, why would it be negative? Because you're an asshole and you relish the <laughs> negative shit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, it's it's a great it was it's a great idea. I, it, everybody is going to enjoy it. So. That's coming up. Hopefully, Jay Sabs will be over her Atlantic City itis on Wednesday. I don't know how it all works with her. I don't know what that entails. She could be there for a week. I spent three weeks in Atlantic City for one weekend once. It was insane. It was. It's hard to sleep there. It's hard to sleep there. Hilarious. I don't know if I could go the way I used to go ten years ago in Atlantic City. No, you can't. I'll you don't think that so? For you. No. I, I Are you feel, kidding? I feel like. Let me pull this off the thing here. I feel like I never, you you know, when you were exhausted, we used to go for people who don't know Atlantic city is a place where they have casinos on the, it's the only, it was years ago. Vegas junior, but like junior, junior, junior. Right. Now everywhere has got a casino with slots and whatever. But back in the day, this was the spot. So everybody on the East coast from New York and Boston and Philly, like this is where everybody went to like have their little junior Vegas party. We would go, so you would leave after a week's of work, a week's worth of work. You'd leave on Friday night sometimes, and you'd drive straight to AC after working the entire day and being exhausted. And then you would be like, I'm so tired, but you would be on your way, and you'd be so excited. And you'd be up the half the night. you go to bed at 6 o'clock the next morning because you were so juiced. 
Yeah, well, p- plus when you get there, it's exciting. They're pumping oxygen into the place. There's no oh, windows. There's no clocks. That's you sweet know what oxygen. time it is. Yeah, you're, you're you're running on on fumes, but you're going. There's moving. something about that oxygen. Like I don't know how much real O2. Uh, O2 is in the air normally because there's, you know, there's carbon and everything else in the air when you're breathing. There's... I don't know if it's possible, but I think they caffeinate the oxygen. They just, I don't know how that would be possible, but I think that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, and you would just, and, and then you would get like three hours of sleep and you'd just be at it the next day and you'd go all the way through the next night again because you'd jam it all in there for the weekend because that's all you had. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I could do it again, but I, no, the idea you of it is exciting. You can't. Ten years ago, dude, you were in your 20s. That's not the same. I know. It's no good. You can't do that anymore. We're only a few years away from saying 10 years ago and it not being our 20s anymore. That's yeah. scary. That's very that scary. Kind of blows. Um, so, again, I don't know if Jay Sabs will be back on Wednesday, but maybe we'll have some exciting tales from Atlantic City from her. Because uh, yeah, weird she... things can happen in casino towns on Mondays and Tuesdays. True. I don't even know when she went down. Do you know when she went down there? This is the first I'm hearing about it. Yeah. It was this text that she sent us. Yeah. So I I know nothing other than I think somebody said two days. And that's a trip, too. That's like you don't just go half a mile down the road. This is that's a two and a half hour drive. Two and a half hour drive. Yeah. That's planning. And you got your kids. She's got her kids. I don't know if she brought her kids down there. I doubt it. She's Not on really the beach in that kids. shot. Maybe she brought I don't oh, know. Maybe, yeah, maybe, but I don't think so. She's kind of smiling in there, so I, I would but Does say, she gamble? No. I don't think she's a big gambler. I think she's a big gambler. Is she? I think she can. Again, remember, we, we said this during the pandemic. She made it She made it down there twice. That's true. So I think she likes the... We'll, we'll ask her when she comes back. Yeah, we should probably get to know her a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel well, like... like... Aren't you friends for like 18 years? Long time. Yeah. yeah, but I guess we never really got to this yeah. question. Who talks anymore? Yeah, I don't know. I've had enough of it all, to be honest with you. All right, everybody around the governor is resigning. Okay. Uh, The big one would be uh, Melissa DeRosa. Now, this was the, quote-unquote, Ghislaine Maxwell of this situation. Remember, she joked. Right, right. She was the Ghislaine Maxwell. She's this big, tough, you know, assistant to the governor, his top aide, his A number one. Uh, some people called her the enforcer, you know, all these terms. I was shocked when Sunday night she sent out a, a statement saying that she was resigning from the office. That is that's bad news huge for, for the gov. Really bad. Because when you're number two, about, ship. how do you stay? I don't know. I mean... The fuck is this guy doing? He's going to get impeached. There's no way he there's no way he survived. He, you know, here's the thing. If he had a shot at surviving it, I would say, go ahead, fight your way through it. Like, that's kind of like a Trump move. Like, just screw whatever people are saying and just keep well, hovering hey, on. There were over 30 people accusing Trump and he got away with all of that. Got away with all of it, you know. So, you know, there's certainly there's certainly. And again, you go back and look at all the horrible people. They were accused before they all really fell, and they kept motoring through, you know, despite all that stuff. Right. So, and again, what this guy did was bad. Again, it yep. wasn't Epstein and Weinstein no. bad, but it was no, still it's not still good. inappropriate and yeah, and skeevy and and creepy. And I only bring that up because I, so some people, even him included, might be thinking, "Well, I'm not Weinstein, so I'm not leave." Like that might be his mentality. Yeah, or he could be taking a cue from. Former prez saying just stick to nope, didn't do it, didn't do it. I don't get what you say. Stick to your guns, which by the way, without me would have been taken away from you by now. I'm just saying I kept all the guns, so stick to them. I don't know what literal and figurative means, so stick to those literal guns. (laughs) Um, yeah, so but but her leaving, I said, if he could make it past Friday, he's got a shot. And then this comes up Sunday, and I go, oh, I don't know now if he could even really. This is going to be a rough week. Because what are you going to do? You're going to stick around for the next three months until they actually do remove you from office? Like, why waste anybody's time? Just leave now. Well, when's his uh, term up? Two years? Next year? Is it 22? I can't remember. 
I don't know if he was just reelected. I don't know if they hadn't <sighs> in twenty if we voted for governor, and I have Can't no idea. Remember. I'm gonna look it up, but. I mean, yeah, it, can you look at it? Yeah. Oh, so anyway, Frank, somebody said this to me, and I thought this was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, he knew, by the way, part two of this, here, all right, let me give you part two of this. You know, Time's Up, the Time's Up movement. This was like second to Me Too, kind of basically mm -hmm. the same thing. Time's Up was really like for Hollywood and trying to root out all the abusers from Hollywood, all these horrible people. So the leader of Time's Up, she just resigned today. Because as it turns out, while this investigation was going on, actually I should say before this investigation really started, when the first accusation came up against Governor Cuomo, he reached out to the leader of Time's Up and they had a little strategy session on how they can uh, uh, kill the credibility of the first accuser. This is a woman, by the way. Uh, let me get her name here for you. This is a woman whose job it was to lead the Time's Up movement is sitting there helping Governor Cuomo figure out a way to kill the credibility of one of his accusers. How fucking stupid can you be? Yeah, that's a little ridiculous. By the way, the election will be 2022, November. I think it's at 8th. All right, so 2022. Yeah. So he's got, I mean, come on. Just got go. Over you. I know. Just go already. Just, just throw in the towel. Do yeah. something else. We still got. You still got to face. Stuff. No, we should get the blind guy. Remember the blind guy? He took over for the. Who was the other piece of shit that had to go? The guy who made us sign all the contest rules in radio. What was his name? Spitzer. Spitzer. No, Spit. Was it Spitzer? Spitzer. Whatever the frick his Spitzer name. sounds right. Yeah, remember, and the blind guy came in after him. Remember, he was. Everybody loved yeah. him for a little while. He was running press conferences. That's right. I remember the yeah. What the he hell showed was everybody name? you do not need eyesight to run this this uh, state. Yeah, we had Spitzer. There was Wiener. What other ridiculous names were there? I don't know, but if your name ends in an ER, it tends to be a problem. Anyway, right. Cuomo, but whatever. Right. Uh, anyway, so here's what somebody said to me. So all right, so Roberta Kaplan is her name. So she's out. She resigns from because it came out today that she helped. They're trying to you know hurt the credibility of Lindsey Bolton, which by the way, this just goes to show you again, what a piece of shit Cuomo is. Cause it, I feel like at this point, yes, it's the stuff that he actually did, but it's also the lengths of which he went to push people around and intimidate them, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, if he's from I, telling their story, I mean, I really, when you look at it, he's really no different from Prince Andrew in that Kate, in that instance where they're just using their power and influence to shut people up. Yeah. No, I, yeah, of course. I mean, if you're a scumbag, scumbag's going to scum it up. I mean, that's the, that's their MO. That's you a know? shirt right there. Scumbag's going to scum it up. You know, they're just going to keep scumming around. I mean, you do something wrong, obviously they're going to want to get away with it, so they can just do more shit. It's the tangled web thing. You just keep doing more wrong shit to get away with the first wrong shit. That's very... Um... Stevie Nicks of you. Players only love you when they're playing. Scumbag's going to scum it up. Scumbags only scum in when they're governing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> didn't know where I was going with that. I, did yeah, you? I didn't. But you saved it. You, <laughs> brought you it home. Good. That that hit the foul pole. It was and it's still a home run. That could That's have been fair. bad. Yeah, it's fair. Quarter of an inch to the left, you're nothing. That hits the thing and you won the game. Count um, it. <laughs> um, so anyway, so somebody says to me. Do you know, like, he, he screwed up Cuomo? Because yeah. if Cuomo, when this is all starting to brew and he knows about it, but the public doesn't, and they, and they go to him and they say, there's going, you know, there's going, even when they said, even when the public kind of knew, and they were like, there's going to be an investigation, then and there he could have said, you know what, I'm going to save everybody's time. I don't want this to distract the running of the state we're trying to get over COVID. we're trying to do all these things i didn't do this i stand by my uh innocence mm -hmm. but in the interest of not letting this become the circuit the media so he could have blamed it on everybody the media circus that it's going to be i will step aside yeah, and that, that would have been... satisfied everybody right however let's say you're you got your dream job 
whatever it is. I don't know what the hell you want to do. This but is whatever it. you're all right. So it's let's sad, say but this is it. Let's say you're doing this, you're on the air, you're doing your thing, you're loving it, and someone says, uh, I don't know, you gotta resign and, and fight this legal thing. Are you gonna resign or are you gonna keep doing this? Did I really do the things? No. And if I didn't really do the things, I'd fight till the death. You think that's what he's doing? I I don't know. I mean, that depends on whether or not he really did the things. Which... Well, I think he did the things, but and I think he knows he did the things, but I think I still think in his mind he thinks it's okay. I think he thinks that those aren't harassment. That's what I think. That's what I think he's thinking. I mean, maybe the kiss on the on the forehead isn't, but you got you got to draw the line at going up a woman's shirt. Whatever, yeah, you know, grabbing her rear end, grabbing and, and everything. Some of that stuff. Yeah, that's no good. I have the audio of the girl that I, the, the girl because she was on uh, CBS. This morning. You want to hear one of them? Not really. OK, no, go ahead. I'm kidding. No, I mean, it's like 20 it's minutes. I got I got a minute clip. I could give you the minute, God. couple of minute clips. Clip it up. Um, but um, but but when you think about where he wound up, which he kind of should have known he knew this is where it was going. He probably had a good idea of what was out there against him. And he could have walked away from this scot-free with, re with, with his reputation still fairly intact. And with his accuser satisfied that he had lost his gig. And that he, was out, and that he, paid, you know, he paid a price for, for his uh, behavior. And now look at where he is. Right. But if he thinks he's innocent then he would probably see quitting his job or resigning as admitting right guilt true i'm i'm going under the assumption that he did it and he knows he did it and he had yeah. a window to get out i think there's three scenarios and take here. it either he did it and he knew it and it was bad and he knew what he was doing he didn't do it and everybody's lying far-fetched or he did it and didn't know he was doing something wrong those are the three scenarios, and I, the last two were very far fetched. I don't know. Seems to me like if he did it, you know, creep is gonna creep. Creep is gonna creep. That's what I'm saying, baby. This All is right. the minute clip of what now? This is the girl even... on CBS this morning that she uh, she's describing the. Uh, this is one of the accusers. The yeah, victims. grabbing her, grabbing her. Uh, right. Her chesticles. Got it. In the office there mansion office in his house he gets up and he goes to give me a hug and i could tell immediately when he hugged me it was in a probably the most sexually aggressive manner than any of the other hugs that he had given me um it was then that i said you know uh governor you know my words were you're going to get us in trouble and i thought to myself that probably wasn't the best thing to say but at that time i was so afraid that one of the mansion staff that they were going to come up and see this and think oh you know is that what she comes here for and that's not what i came there for and that's not who i am and i was terrified of that and when i said that he walked over shut the door so hard to the point where i thought for sure Someone downstairs must think, they must think if they heard that, what is going on, came back to me, and that's when he put his hand up my blouse and cupped my breast over my bra. I exactly remember looking down, seeing his hand, which is a large hand, thinking to myself, oh my God, this is happening. It happened so quick. He didn't say anything. When I stopped it, he just pulled away and walked away. So that's weird, right? I mean, it's weird that he pulls away, walks away. So, like, usually people who are predatorial like that don't really do that. But I guess there's, you know. Oh, well, you look at, like, Louis C.K. He didn't really. Uh... There's a minute 16 where she recaps the selfie the one. Do you want to hear that or do you want to skip that one? Yeah. You're cool. Yeah. The selfie? Th yeah, it's fine. I mean, what was the selfie? Th Oh, oh, that she was right. I got it. They took a selfie, but she said that he he was like rubbing her rear end. Yeah, let's play it now. We're talking about it, so let's just play it. While I was upstairs in the office, the governor said, "Why don't we take a selfie?" So his suggestion, you yes. said, with I, your phone. 
with my phone. I then felt, while taking the selfie, his hand go down my back onto my butt, and he started rubbing it, not sliding it, not, you know, quickly brushing over it, rubbing my butt. And did you ask him, what are you doing? Well, this was while I was taking the selfie. I became so nervous that my hands were clearly shaking, and a lot of the photos that I was snapping were completely blurry. I showed him them, and he said, oh, you know, those aren't, you know, those aren't good. And he said, why don't we go sit on the couch, and we can take a better one. So you sat on the couch? Um, I sat on the couch because I thought to myself, okay, I don't think on the couch that he would have a way to just do what he just did. So I felt safer, actually, on the couch. And in the photo, you know, I have my arm wrapped around his shoulder, mm -hmm. you know, almost as if, you know, you were taking a picture with a buddy. So that's that. Yeah, no, that's not good. And, you know, here's the thing. I, late at night, they're in the office in his house. I mean, it's the governor's mansion, but it's still his house, you know. And uh, she's a pretty girl. He's probably getting that. And that's the thing, too, with these politicians and these people in power, especially men. They think, oh, everybody, you know, they, oh, she must want me, you know, all this and yeah. that. Like, we're always kind of thinking that kind of. They the jump way, to assumptions that are not there. I went to the beach uh, Saturday. Can't wait to hear what this has to do with it. And there was... Um, I believe it was like a Muslim family because they had the full thing on the one had a sari on. It was two. It was a. It was two couples. One one of the girls had the full thing on, and the other girl she didn't have that, but she was, she had jeans on and a shirt, and then she later like changed into like a full on bathing suit covering her whole uh, thing up. But she kept checking me out, Frank, which is, and it made me. And here's what I, here's what it made me think. Cause I kind of look like her husband, you know what I mean? Like I kind of have a Middle Eastern thing going. Remember the guy who blew up the, um, who set off the bomb in Times Square that one time? It didn't blow anything up really. It just kind of went off in the back of a truck. What or... podcast did I just sit down? Did I fall asleep for an hour? Anyway, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> what God? I'm on the air at the time, right? The next morning, and my phone starts blowing up, and I look at it on Twitter, and everybody is tweeting me pictures of this guy. He's in the middle. He's from the Middle East somewhere. I forget where. We looked exactly alike. <laughs> they were like, "Don't go near the city because you're gonna get arrested." Like if you look it up, me and this guy look basically alike. So, so what anyway, does that have to do with the beach? So anyway, I started thinking about it because because like. When it happens once or twice, I'm like, yeah, whatever. This was like five times where this girl was like giving me like hardcore looks. And I'm looking at her husband and I kind of look like her husband. Her husband was in better shape than me, to be fair. Did you try to out kneel him? I tried to out kneel him. <laughs> no, but you know what it made me think of? So a Jewish friend of mine was telling me that um, Jewish men like to date or, or marry, go out with whatever non-Jewish women. They call it a... Chicks appeal. Yes. Another Seinfeld thing. I think I have Muslim shiks appeal. I think I am like, ooh, this guy's not Muslim. He's a little risque, but he's like my type, you know, and, uh, you know, boom, like Muslim appeal. We got to come up with a new thing for that. I'm shiks a Muslim ish. I don't know how many things you said in that whole spiel that were offensive, but it was at least 10. <laughs> at least. Offensive? What's offensive there about that? There was like that? 10 things in that whole thing. Because because they because if it's a Gentile person, they feel there's like a ooh this is wrong. like I'm I'm uh, I guess I don't know, upsetting mom and dad or I'm on the, you know, the wrong side of the tracks kind of thing. I don't know what they're thinking, but I think that's what this girl had for me. That's what I was thinking. Like, Nothing wrong with looked, that because she looked in your direction like four or five times. Maybe she, I don't know, man, maybe like a lot like... of like I'll, I'll tell you why so much so that the last time it happened, I went like this. I checked my. I was like, if I have a boogie, there's, <laughs> there's got to be a reason. Laying on the charm. That's called that move there. It's called laying on the charm. No, I go after the the after the look was over. I'm like, do I have a booger? Because I there's there's a lot of. She was probably wondering how a well well wolf changes in the middle of the day, not with a full moon. <laughs> I, you know that's. Well, her husband was super hairy too. That's why I'm saying like. 
if if <laughs> if her husband went into the sack of suds and killed the the clerk, I would They're have gotten arrested. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't I look shot that, the clerk. that too dissimilar. We really right. he was a couple of skin shades darker than me. That was the only difference. We could have been uh, mis mistaken. Identical. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best lines in that whole thing. Um, you, hey, you could have you could have been her type. Obviously, she has a type. It's the, the husband. Is she married the husband? And she clearly Similar. knows that I'm not Muslim, right? So I mean, what was I, the point of this story? That I think I found a new category, Be, like like how like how Jewish people have shiksa peel. Right. Or I think they just call it shiksa. Was Seinfeld who said shiksa peel? Whatever it is. Shiksa, but. He added appeal. Yeah. Shik's appeal. I think I've got that. I, I think I had that with this uh, young Muslim lady. Because I think, uh, because here's I think what it was I'm just saying. a I think it, it was just a Neil situation. On looks alone I couldn't have got it on looks alone. I think this idea that I'm I'm a break from her her traditions, her so religion why did it have was to be, appealing. Well, it could have just been looks because the husband looked just like you. If the husband looked exact opposite of you then I can get the shiksa peel. You're thing. saying just because I'm flat out not the husband, but I'm, but I look too similar. Well, she's attracted to the husband. If you were gonna cheat on your wife, which I honestly I would put you on the as the last person on the planet to do so. Not happen. But if you were going to cheat on your wife, you you wouldn't cheat on her with a brunette that looks exactly like her. You'd go. There has to be something new and exciting there. I, I don't know, uh, but I mean, she's obviously attracted to her husband. Right. And you look like the husband, so maybe she thought. So what's the difference? Maybe between she was me and just look. Maybe she was just looking at you because you looked like the husband. That <laughs> she was like, "This might be my husband's long lost brother." It just could have been. Holy crap! You just look. A, <laughs> doesn't have to be that she wants you. Her husband's her husband's brother was separated at birth. <laughs> I mean, if you're on the like, beach and you shit. see a woman that looks just like your wife, you're gonna look a couple times. Yeah, I probably. Yeah, I would. Doesn't have to mean that you you want to go. You know. Shit Can't you just to, let you know, me have something? No. Why do you have I gotta to knock it the shit down. I gotta angry birds that shit. Is that just a Jewish thing? Because I don't remember like Christians going, oh, I gotta marry a Jewish girl to upset my mom. Is it because they want to upset their mom and dad? What's the shit's appeal? I don't I even don't know. I don't know. I, I, I have to rewatch that episode, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. Because I know uh, Jew, you know, Orthodox, they tend to marry within the faith. Right. Totally fine. Right. They, but they, I think that's just like an escape from it. Like a date, almost like a danger thing, maybe like a, not a danger, danger, right. but like, you know, bad boy kind of thing. But You're like not, Jehovah's witnesses or like what I know about other, you know, I, I, other religions, I, I wish I could speak. You're not going to offend anybody. You, like about you already... Jehovah's... No, no, no. Jehovah's witnesses. I know very little about, I don't know their story. I used to work with a Jehovah's witness actually. Uh, back at the airport in the airport days, mm. real fascinating guy, super nice guy, super fascinating. Because he's this like, I'm a just, just yeah, God. He goes, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I go, oh, I go, okay. And he's like, don't worry. Out of nowhere, gonna... he just said it. Yeah, he goes, well, we were talking about. It. He goes, no, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, like a group of guys. And I was like, oh, and he's like, don't worry, I'm not going to show up at your door. <laughs> I was like, okay, I wasn't worried, you know. I I don't think I've ever. Well, maybe a long time ago when I was a kid. They don't do that. They don't, I haven't seen a Jehovah's Witness. In anywhere really uh, anymore. yeah most fascinating thing about jehovah's witness they they're not down with the blood transfusion they won't take uh, blood from anybody yeah not even something like a relative yeah no because i cause he was saying that they had this um uh thing on his license or bracelet i forget what it was now that was like if you know if they get into an accident don't don't give him blood that's so, interesting. If something yeah, happens that, and they get rushed to the hospital, like they're like, "Don't, don't give me uh, blood." Just work with the blood you got. That's I it. guess so. Yeah, I'm like, "Don't you want to say?" He's like, "No, it's my religious beliefs." So what if? All right, what if you stock? What if you do a Kramer, and you stock your freezer full of oh, your own blood? Your own. That's interesting. We'll have to have a Jehovah's Witness on. Yeah, can you do that? Get your own blood back in there. All right. So far from this episode, we need a, a Muslim expert, a Jehovah's Witness expert, and a, a U.S. U.K. extradition expert. Yeah, we should have planned a little, a little bit before we started this. Also, somebody who who can teach speech would be great too. I feel like because I, I speak good. Extradition expert. I still can't I, even say it. I speak great words. Mm. I have the best words. 
<laughs> uh, Chris Cuomo. Fast. Can we just like, talk about the Cuomos? Well, here's what I here's what here's the new wrinkle that we learned. Oh God. Because Cuomo wasn't talking about his brother at all. Right. That I thought it was all him. Go to find out. It's CNN who doesn't want him talking about it. Aha. Uh -huh. But not because you know they feel bad for him because he was on the little strategy crew that this other you. girl was on. I told you he was involved. He can't yeah. have. But they're that, that, pissed. They're livid about it. They're they're livid that he did that. Oh, that he was uh, his right. brother. It's I mean, still his. It, it's still his fault. But they're the ones who kept him from talking about it the other night because he couldn't talk about it fairly. All right. So now, do you are you still like anti Chris Cuomo's stance? I mean, it's yes. not his stance. It's CNN's stance. No, but but they told him not to. They right. told him not to go into those strategy sessions, and he did. Oh, that they told him not to go. I don't they know. told him. I thought yeah. you meant they told him to stop. Yeah. Talking about it. Or I don't know about when they found out about it. They told him to stop going. I don't know how it all worked, but they told him not to be a part of it, and he was a part of it. I mean, uh, it's hard. It's a brother. I mean, if if you're, I don't know, if your sister was, I don't know, if my brother, I would probably try to help my brother as best I can. I would sell your brother out really quick. It's true. Fast. Yeah. Down the river. Up the river, adjacent both, to the both river. ways, all Para directions of the river, parallel to the river. <laughs> exactly, basically. So I don't know what they're going to do to Cuomo, but here's the thing. I, I bet you I don't know what this guy's deal is or what his agreement is with CNN, but I, I think if he has anything less than a year left on his deal. See, uh, you know, you 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 talk about cancel culture, and then you're ready. Cuomo should resign. This, this ain't guy cancel should leave. culture. This is a failure to do your job the right way. This is so a, just cancel. It's not cancel. There's got to be there's there's got to be expectations at a job. If you can't do yeah, the job you but, were hired to do because of your stupid decisions. Uh, but see, but then there's like there's ex there's um, uh, what's it called for that? There's exceptions for, to that. You can't do your job because you're pregnant. Yeah, but that's he's that's pregnant. He, he ain't pregnant. See, there's exceptions. Yeah, some. Now, this ain't one of them. Now. Well, if you're, I mean, the odds that your brother was gonna get caught up in a huge scandal. No, that would. How is it his fault? Hey, going, going to the right, meeting. Right, but you're unclear on whether or not they told him not to go into the meeting, or if they told him afterwards. Okay, here. Let me clarify. Let me let me clarify and clear this up. Cle and clarify and clear it up. <laughs> let me clarify this for you. Go ahead. When your brother calls you and says, hey, brother, I need to figure out how I can best get out of this situation and how I can handle the meeting and so forth, media and so forth. And you're you're on television, so you'd be a great help. Can you come down to this thing? He should have said, I am with you. I support you. I believe that you didn't do this, but I can't go to that meeting. I can't go there. Because it, it puts me in a bad situation. By the way, let's also not forget that Andrew Cuomo is a dick in this situation because he shouldn't have expected to put his brother in this situation. Absolutely. There are plenty of other people that you could well, go to. Well, is that to. how it went down? Did Andrew Cuomo ask for his help or did Chris Cuomo offer his help? You know what? I don't know. But either way, Andrew should have not let. I would have never. If that's me, if this is me, I'm never going to put somebody else in a compromising situation where they could wind up losing their gig over some shit that I got caught up in. Right. You know? No, I hear you. It's a mess. The whole thing's a mess. Yeah. Um, but hey, at least he's, uh, he didn't go against the family. <laughs> Never go against the family. Never go against the family. Never go against the Even I know this. The Democrats, they're ruining everything. Even that whole family thing. Right. They're killing it. Um, you know who's a mess is this Nick Cannon. Okay, I'm worried about it. he's a loose he's a loose Nick Cannon if I could say. loose Cannon, loose Cannon, good gotta one. Put that gotta store that store that Cannon away a little bit. <laughs> um, How many kids? He's he, seven. Well, that's not that's there's people with seven kids. That's not four of which came this year. Oh, that's that's something. He, he's expanding <laughs> rapidly. He's expanding rapidly. As like, was there twins in there somewhere or yeah. is this four different mommies?
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has had uh, multiple babies with multiple girlfriends, by the way, not mommies. I mean, not wives, girlfriends. Girlfriends. Um, and he says it's because he's rebelling against the Eurocentric institution of marriage. What? He was on oh, having uh, girlfriends. Yeah, fine. You know what? But what is that? Not having the babies. You mean having the babies is rebelling against? You're getting women pregnant is a bit rebelling against being marriage? married and having a, a, a baby with with your wife he's saying is a eurocentric idea of marriage all right you could do that once and rebel you have to do it seven times i think so how, how much is you know all right eight is I'm, i've rebelled enough eight is good i here's the thing two kids is enough yeah but remember you the have... 80s show eight is enough you have three and it's like okay you're kind of you're pushing the limits there you have four and you had better prove to me that one of them was either an accident or an at or twins surprise left on twins. your doorstep yeah yeah now remember back in the day one income household used to have like 13 kids that's back in the day that's if and, and if you were running a farm for a, then fine okay. or a minor league team yeah, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like this Alec Baldwin, I love him, but he's pu he's pushing his luck with the kids now at this point. It's, it's out be of overrun control. by Baldwins and Cannons. It's, <laughs> it's out of control. He said on The Breakfast Club, is that, that's Hot 97, right? I think that's Power 105. Oh, okay, you're right. That's Power 105. He said, quote, that's a Eurocentric concept. The idea that you're supposed to have this one person for the rest of your life. The idea that a man should have one woman... We shouldn't have anything. I have no ownership over this person. Nobody told him. Like, who told him you have to? Yeah. It is his seven. He welcomed his seventh child, the fourth within the last year in June, and said that fathering so many kids is not a decision that he gets to make. He's, he says, <laughs> quote, those women and all women are the ones that open themselves up and say, I would like to allow this man into my world and I will birth this child. Um, it ain't my decision. I'm just following suit. Yeah, exactly. I think you have something to do with it. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you don't have to, I mean, you know, throw a jacket on and you, and you, you'd be, Lower in the odds there. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, every, like everybody can get to live their life the way they get to live. And yeah, nobody it's like, you know, you know, those things where you say, where it's like nobody dot, 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 Nick Cannon. I'm rebelling against marriage. It's like, right. Nobody's making right. you get married. What do you do? Cares. And this real laissez faire attitude of like, it's not me. It's these women who want, it's like, yeah, but here's the thing with that. Like, and and what I was going to say was hey. is fortunately like he's a wealthy guy right so he yeah as long can, as he could take care of them and everything's fine who right cares? he can take care of these kids but at some like seven kids with several different moms and it's like at some point you're going to shortchange somebody on being a father to them like at some point in this process when whoever's eight and the other one's fourteen and whatever like it's impossible like and this is coming from somebody that literally can't co keep up with two kids. In the same house. Right. However, I'm sure they're operating under the assumption that he's not dating all of those women. He's probably moved on from a few of them. And they probably will move on to another man or woman or whoever. I guess so. And, and start I, a family with, you know, stepdads or whoever. Women can absolutely take care of kids without men. They really don't need us. I've learned that. I mean, I could I could attest to that. A very give very... another ten years. They're not gonna need us for much. Yeah, I totally. Feel like they can, as soon as they uh, artificially make a a little swimmy guy, we're out. We're done for. Oh, as soon as women figure out a way to procreate without men, done. No reason. There is no reason. Life uh 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 finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> what is that from? What is that from? Yeah. Claim to be all 1994. That's going to kill me now. What is that from? I know that. I'm not telling you because you should know it. Shit. Uh, life uh, 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 finds a way. Oh, fuck. What, you're going to kill me. What is that from? You got to tell me. Um, uh, must go faster. 
Man. I got nothing. You are brutal. Help you me out me. here. Help me. Uh, if, if it's if there's one thing that we've learned um, is that um, yes, uh, life uh, Independence Day finds a way. <laughs> Wrong. That's not it. That's not jackass. Jeff Goldblum. You got the actor. Oh, it's a uh, Jurassic Park. Then there you go. Okay, that's it. I knew it was. Uh, I knew it was Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, it's the fly. <laughs> it's the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Life. I, there's. By the way, there's a new TV show where all men magically die. I don't know if you saw this. I don't know if it's no. on TBS or Hulu or I forget where I saw it. It's on YouTube. I can't keep these things. Sh- yeah anymore all these streaming things but it's great it was like the scenes are like you know like is there something wrong mr president and the guy the president's like no i'm fine and next thing he's like just spitting up blood and he's down and then like so one guy doesn't die oh shit and and this is the show it's (laughs) it's just women and this one guy huh but they don't know why all the men died who's the guy i don't know if they all know the guy i don't know i i have i'll have to look and see it's just you some know. random actor. The, the actresses I recognize. I don't even recognize him. That's kind of funny. Yeah. But that was the... Didn't one of the SNL guys have a last man standing show? Yeah, but it wasn't... It was everybody on the planet was gone. And then he found a few random people along the way. But it right. wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't like it was... One gender is gone. That was called last man standing. Well, there no, there was a was I think. it Last Man Standing? Last Man Standing is the one with uh, Tim Tim the Toolman Taylor. Oh, so this was I forget what that one was called. What, was it just Last Man on Earth or something? Something like that. So yeah, that 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 sounds like an interesting concept. One guy, I mean, guy better run for the hills. That guy, he's gonna get laid. That guy's gonna be. Uh, Remember the end of uh, Raiders, not Raiders, Last Crusade, where that guy just withers away and he's all shriveled up and dried out? Yeah. That's what he's going to be. Uh, Last Man on Earth. It was the Will Forte TV show on Fox. Right. I like Will Forte. He's funny. Yeah, he's good. I'll have to track down what this show was. I can't find it right now, but it, it was. Uh, it looked good. So all men die, women take over, and there's one guy. There's one guy left, and he's, yeah, there were some issues. I don't know. Like, he's fighting. He's, like, I, I guess they didn't all know. If every if every man died in a day, it would probably take you a while to untangle that web and figure out that there's a guy, there's left, I mean, guy left. A couple of weeks, you know, or find Plus, the one guy. I mean, life will go on because, number one, you just raid the sperm banks. True. Number two... Once you do that, you're going to have more kids, which will lead to more guys. Oh, and I wonder if they will survive. I don't really they, know the, the point of the, the premise of the show. Right. Unless it's just this one guy whose his line is the only, you know, he's the only one that could, his, that, could, that could survive it. Like his bloodstream is the only one that could survive it. Who knows? Right. He's immune to whatever the hell. That's an interesting concept. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. But there's something about... Mary? (laughs) Just filling in the blanks. There's something about, like, shows where, like, really bad things happen. Like, every man... Like, we just... We're we're still in the pandemic. And this idea that... There's always shows like that, though. Walking Dead. Yeah, but we're fast. Why are we so fascinated with it? Like, I, I was watching. I was like, oh, this is good. We're literally kind of living something similar that is so horrific that we've all hated for the last 18 months. Yet this YouTube commercial comes on, and I'm like, oh, wait, I, gotta, I wasn't going to skip well, cause it. Because it's, it's fantasy. It's sci-fi. You know, it's not like it's, you know, based on... It's like The Walking Dead. It's sci-fi. We're all, it's the apocalypse, zombie apocalypse. It's just... It's fascinating, and it's, all of a sudden there's no rules, and you're fighting. It's, it's you know, throwing you back you know to the stone age basically and well your supplies run out all this stuff and you got to fend for yourself it's it's uh when it's told right it's an interesting story they they got it right the first season and a half of walking dead and then it just went off the rails Mm. i I stuck with it for a long time i think i missed the last season and that was it yeah 
but I couldn't take it anymore. They they were in the I, like I haven't seen a zombie, and I was like, this is this isn't what I signed up. I I remember when that show was first they were first showing um, uh, coming attractions for it. I was like, finally, it was the literally I think the first zombie TV show that I could remember. It was the first one. I was like, The yeah. Walking Dead, great. Yeah. And started out great. The guy wakes up in the hospital, and so everything's chaos. And then it's just, they rebuilt, and I'm like, all right, I guess the th zombies aren't a threat anymore. And I just became the other people, and I was like, this isn't really, you know, once, once that was happening, I was like, eh. I mean, I want to see more survival, more zombies. Now they're talking about governing and laws, and I'm like, get the hell out of here with that. I want to see people on the run. I want to see, you know, people. Why? Why? It's so because it's a fun. They fantasy. say that's it's that's why like a... we we like roller coasters because of this idea yeah, of danger but still being safe. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, zombie apocalypse things are like you know it's not going to happen. You know it can't happen, but it's just fun to think about. It's like something that. Like, what would you do in that situation? Like, if you were outside and you saw zombies, I mean, you ask yourself two questions. One, is it the slow-moving zombies? Or two, is it the modern running-after-you zombies? Because if it's the running-after-you zombies, you're done. You're not getting out of that. But if it's the slow Dawn of the Dead zombies, all right, deal you with can, that. You can, you can negotiate that. If I can outwalk them, I'm fine. You know, if I if I can put my rollerblades on and zip past them, I'll be all right. But if it's the runners, then that's a problem. That is a big problem. Um, this reminds me of uh, there was a rumor going around on the internet. Somebody was saying that I am Legend. Mm -hmm. In I am Legend, that the virus spread through vaccines during that movie. That's not true. It spread. No, it was a virus that spread. It, well, no, it was. It actually was in the movie. No, it was the it was the cure for cancer. It wasn't a vaccine, but it was the cure for cancer. It was in the beginning of the. I don't know how it was in the book. I didn't read the book, but in the movie, um, I forget her name. The actress, she was on TV. Uh, Will Smith, or I think Will Smith was watching like an interview of hers or something. Right. And she was a doctor. She's like, "We've cured cancer. This is you know what it is when we've cured it." And then somehow it mutated and screwed everybody. So yeah, in the in the movie, I think it was the cure for cancer that that screwed everybody up. Yeah, this is according to Snopes. The zombie outbreak in I Am Legend was caused by a genetically modified virus, not a vaccine. So, but it was the cure for cancer. I don't. That's what they said in the movie. Maybe they thought they could cure cancer with a virus. I don't even know. But Maybe. somebody. But here's I bring it up because somebody tweeted that i am legend was the, the zombie outbreak was due to a failed vaccine and that's not true well, whatever the case it's a movie yeah, yeah. there was also a it is a movie but there was also a picture of Rand paul getting a shot and everybody said there was a covid shot and that also was not true there's practically nothing true on the internet anymore. You can't believe anything <laughs> i don't, know, I don't really even nothing. believe what i'm saying after that. yeah i mean it's just you know it's, no, it's weird. It, it, it's a movie. I, I Am Legend is a movie, so you can't base your knowledge of vaccines and how they work on a Will Smith movie or mm -hmm. any movie. You know, I mean... Yeah, by the way, Will Smith is bullshit. Where was he the last year and a half? He should have figured this out by now. I love Will Smith. I can watch anything he's in. As an actor, as a real hero, he's been shit so far. Yeah, that's true. Um, but wrapping up on Nick Cannon, I just, uh, you know, that whole, this whole thing of like, I don't have to do anything, but be a sperm donor, I guess it kind of works, but at the same time, you like have responsibilities now you have like, these yeah. kids to, to take care of. Yeah. And I, I know there's a lot of, there's like a lot of people. There's a couple of football players the last couple of years. I only know this cause I, I'm obsessed with hard knocks that show hard knocks. And I can't remember who, but I remember seeing a couple of them that, that had like ten kids or something crazy like that. And it's just like, that's you're you're nuts. I mean, if that's what they want, and they yeah, I mean, and some of them, them with with the same mom. But there was a couple that like they had a whole bunch of different moms, and it's like, 
traveling around. Again, I know you have money and you could financially take care of them, but all these kids are going to benefit from a father figure here. You know what I'm saying? And like... Yeah, not necessarily. I, I guess you're right about you that. You could be raised without a dad. You could be raised with two moms. You could be raised with two dads. Who the hell knows? A kid doesn't mean... If you're a single mom, you could raise a, a perfectly wonderful kid. I agree. And I agree. And again, like dads die or sh stuff happens and they can't be in the life and, and you're going to wind up being just fine. And it's not to say they're not dating people. You know, they're going to, they could get like another person in, in the mix. I, I just, dad, I would, stepmom. I don't think I could do this, what he's doing. Like I no, couldn't just no, be like, it's not for everybody. Kid, and then I, I just walk away and I just, no. I don't have to worry about it. It's, it's a little scumbaggish. That's Unless, what I'm saying. Like this idea of, oh, it's not me. That's like it's something definitely. that they're willing to do and it's like well no because it's not even you or her you are you are you creating did, kind of, you a did new something person. as a you did something as a team and now you're bailing on that team it, but it's not even that it's like oh she wanted this and i who am i to stop her i don't own unless her the kid, unless the woman was like i just want a kid from you Yes, I guess so, which is okay. But but my my point is we don't know. Yeah, my point is is it's not even about you and the woman, because you're 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 only taking into consideration you and the woman. What what they're forgetting from this equation is the kid. You know what I'm saying? Like the, what is what does the kid want slash need for the rest of the kid's life? Well, what are you gonna? It just needs a loving household. I guess so, but you're One acting like ten people. It doesn't matter as long you're as you're acting like it of. ain't me. I don't own the woman, and and she wants to birth the child, and it, but it's like, well, if no, that's the si there's that, a kid. Yeah, we are assuming that he's just impregnated him and he's going to see you, but the deal could be the woman's just like, get me pregnant, and then just take care of us financially. See you later. That could be the deal, and that's if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. I guess if the kids, yeah going to be taken care of then that's fine even still even with that i still feel like and the mom great i, I more power to her I, I really feel that way not every household has to have two parents they don't but again that's a tough that's a t here's the thing i mean i'm looking at these they're beautiful women i mean it's not like they're old or they're you know yeah, they're I'm sure they'll not, get a, a they'll get into a relationship tomorrow who knows i, I guess so i don't know maybe i'm just an old old school old-fashioned guy i don't know yeah. Not every every household. You go knock on any door. There's like, it's going to be a different setup in every house, almost. Yeah, I just feel like if you're young and attractive, yeah, you keep giving it a shot to find that person that to share that life with you for the rest of your life. If you're yeah. like 38 <laughs> and it hasn't happened, and you're like, if I don't have a kid now, I'm never going to have a kid. I, I that I could understand. That that I could understand because that shit happens, and you know you you got to. If that's your chance and you can be a great mom, then go for yeah. it. Do it. Hey, if you're 25 years old and you want to do that, who, you know, you're an adult. You could do that. Yeah. You know, and, you, and you're able to, to take care of the kids and nothing, you know, they'll never want for anything, then you're fine. Take care of the kids. What about taking care of mom? Quentin Tarantino was like, this fuck is a big you, scumbag mom. move. <laughs> fuck you, mom. Quentin you think Tarantino. it's a scumbag move? Yeah. Do you hear the reason why? Well, well here's, explain what happened. Okay, frankly. here's what happened. Quentin was doing an interview. He was on uh, with the co-creator of, of Billions, Brian Kopelman, and they were talking about you know their upbringing and all this you know this kinds of stuff. And um, his mom came up, right? And they were talking about like childhood and moms and everything like that. And Tarantino said that he always struggled academically in school and that his mom always gave him a hard time about that. Uh, when Tarantino was in trouble for writing screenplays in school, his mom would, he said, bitch at him about that. And then in the middle of her little tirade once, she said, oh, and by the way, this little writing career with finger quotes, she used finger quotes, this little writing career that you're doing, that shit is over. Tarantino said that at that moment when she said that to him sarcastically, it was in his head and he said to himself, okay, lady, when I become a successful writer, you will never see penny one from my success. There'll be no house for you. 
No vacations for you. No Elvis Cadillac for mommy. You get nothing because you said that. Copeland asked him, did you stick to that? His response was, yes, yes. I helped her out with a jam with the IRS, but no house, no Cadillac, no nothing. That's a scumbag. You think that's a scumbag move? Yeah. I think he's putting mom every in mom, place. Every mom is going to try to rein in the kid. Yeah, you got to reach for the stars. You got to try your best with everything. But I'm spe especially back when Tarantino was a kid, How? what are the odds you're going to become Tarantino? Nobody felt that way in the 60s and 70s when he was coming up. Was I'm sure she was trying to, I mean, yeah, you're supposed to encourage your kids to do anything they want. I get that. But if she was trying to be practical and was, I don't even know if his dad was around and he, she was worried that he was, you know, and he was sucking in school too. I mean, yeah, do what you want, but at least be good in school too. No, parents didn't say, by the way. Our generation of parents didn't say that, and we're younger yeah, than like him. Maybe, maybe get a you know a job that'll pay the bills. Yeah, I think that's what her point might have been. I wasn't there. I don't know, but if she was like, listen, but, but there's a nice way to do it. She didn't have to be like, "It's writing thing you're going he? for." He was young. He was in grade school, I think. All right. Well, she had it with her, his. She had it probably with his grades being shitty, and he's wasting. You know, he's spending all this time writing. Fine, you want to write? Great. Get your grades up and then do the extracurricular thing. He was 12 and he had just written a screenplay called Captain Peach Fuzz and the Anchovy Bandit. I mean, Is that, that true? sounds good. Is that true? It's true. Yeah, so I don't blame the mom on that one. I, by the way, he'd have my 1850 right now. Oh, I would want to see that movie, whatever it is. I got to tell you, good. I'm probably, I don't know if I'm alone on this one, but I thought his last movie kind of blew. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I also I, uh, I also didn't love it. It was literally a him patting himself on the back movie. Oh, look, I could make a movie. And it was nonsense and ridiculous. And I was like, all right. I, I like Brad Pitt, sure. Uh, you know. I loved, I loved Leonardo DiCaprio in it, and I thought Brad Pitt was good, too. Yeah, but it was also just, I felt like it was him just, you know, Spanking off for two hours, you know. I was like, "All right, why am I watching this?" It was, was two no and a half hours and didn't really go anywhere. Didn't go anywhere. Yeah. And the ending was, to you know, obviously he doesn't write, he doesn't do true to reality things like what happened at the end didn't right. really happen in real life. Right. He used real characters, real people for the some of it. But didn't you feel like he went to like, the uh, well one too many times with this one because he did that in what was the one? Uh, the Nazi one. That was a great one. Glorious Bastards. And Glorious Bastards. I like that one. Phenomenal. But then he, and then there was Django Unchained. Mm -hmm. where that was a good one too. Was that true, the ending of that? Or was that a true story? Was that based in any reality? I feel like it was I, based in some reality. I'm not sure of that one. I, I thought the, the Jamie Foxx character was a real character. I'm not was sure. A real, maybe not. I, I could be mistaken. But I just felt like this whole let's be in reality and then tell the unreality ending. I've seen that already. You know? Yeah, I thought this was just another. Um, there was usually his movies have some kind of, I don't know, not, I guess, meaning or point. This one just. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I get it. He's a washed up actor. He gets another chance. Okay. Great. I think it was his least. Six, it was my least favorite film out of all of his films. I love the Glorious Bastards. I love the Glorious Django Bastards. Is so good. Even the Hateful Eight wasn't terrible. I, I, I got into it a little bit. Yeah. Um, love Bruce Dern. Get him in anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, give him bigger parts, please, but get him in anything. Still has. And uh, by the way, I watched Django Unchained the other night. It's, it's a, just a great movie. It's a badass movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, but. I hate to sound like a cop out. Was there? Has he ever topped Pulp Fiction? He hasn't for me. Inglorious Bastards may be the Inglourious closest he Bastard. ever came. I kind of like that one better than Pulp Fiction. Better than Pulp Fiction? You. Yeah. I, I mean, can't go there. I mean, I. Pulp Fiction just. I mean, it was an original. Spin Dude, on. We had never seen anything no, like that at the but time. It, at the time, but it was an original spin on based on old concepts 
based on Pulp Fiction things that they did in the 60s and 70s. It's based on that. He just borrowed concepts from that. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. I'm just saying to the to mix up the way that he did to yeah to to the casting to reinvigorating uh, what's his name there. Uh, Travolta. Travolta. Oh no! It was really it was a monumental film. I mean, every the way everything tied in. I just liked Inglorious Bastards better. Yeah, Inglorious Bastards was. Who's the guy in that Inglorious Bastards? Brad Pitt. And, no. Um, well, yes, Brad Pitt was. You know what? Nobody talks about Brad Pitt in that movie, and he was really good in that movie. No, I want my skin. You know, just <laughs> the way he, it was great. Yeah, he was really good, but he gets overshadowed by the other guy, the German guy. Yeah, what the heck is his I name? I forget his name. That was his really big breakout. He is so Christoph good. Waltz. Oh, he's great. He is fin- in two moments when he's having the cake in the restaurant with the girl. Oh, man, that was such a tense scene. That one, and then the other one where he's in the house and, and he's eating again. Uh, isn't, the, yeah. no, in, the, in the beginning, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. He's a, such a menacing. That was a, he was a good character. And then Brad Pitt, it was, it was great. Yeah. And that, that scene in the bar was amazing. The, with the card game? When they're, yeah, the, uh, yeah, with the card game. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Yeah. I mean, and the acting, you know. All of that was now. I gotta watch that movie again. Uh, <laughs> such a good movie, such a good movie. <laughs> um, Sarah Gilbert. When I heard this story, I was like, Wow, what did she do? Um, yeah, see, you think I'm talking about I know who Sarah Gilbert is. Who's Sarah Gilbert? Roseanne, uh, The View. For that's a while. A, that's exactly what I thought. This Sarah Gilbert came up with the COVID-19 vaccine, and she just got a Barbie. All right. So when we, I first heard same it, name. I go, Leave me alone. I got it right. I go, wait a <laughs> second. The girl who's on Roseanne invented the COVID-19 vaccine? I'm like, this is fucking crazy. But She's uh, doing too much. <laughs> she's way overextending herself. This is the young lady right here, and you can see it for those of you who are watching. There's the Barbie right next to her. Now, which one did she create? I, yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a good question because uh, I think there aren't they all kind of the same? Didn't they all kind of get there well, at the same time? Well, you got Pfizer, you got Johnson and Johnson, and um, what the heck's the other one? Oxford, AstraZeneca. Okay, that was hers. Fifty uh, nine year old professor at Oxford University and co developer of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is one of six women in the COVID nineteen fight who have a new uh, Barbie modeled after them. Mattel is recognizing them with a line of Barbie role model dolls. See, that would be my my goal. Like, if I I would love to, like, if I was an actor, I'd be like, put me in a movie where they're gonna make fig, action figures of me of my yes. character. Yeah. How cool is that? Like, you're in Star Wars, you go down the toy aisle, and there you are, hanging. In, you know, you're like, ah, oh, this is me. Yeah, that's how super cool, cool. How cool is that? Especially if it's like you, you, not like right. Like in Toy Story, Woody is Tom Hanks. That doesn't count. No, but if it's your face, yes. Like like you're a, you know in Star Wars, you're a Jedi. You're in the Jedi robes. You got it's your face, and then, you know, played by Frank. You know, it's like that would be great. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Among the other honorees are emergency room nurse Amy O'Sullivan, who treated the first COVID nineteen patient at the Wyckoff Hospital in Brooklyn, New York, and you got a Andrew. Doll? She's got a doll, too. And Audrey Cruz, a frontline doctor in Vegas who fought discrimination, according to Mattel. Other dolls include Chica Stacy Orua, great name, a Canadian psych, uh, psychiatry resident at the University of Toronto who battled systemic racism in healthcare, a Brazilian biomedical researcher Jacqueline Goes de Jesus, who led sequencing of the genome of a COVID-19 variant in Brazil, uh, and I think there was one or two more. That's um, complicated stuff. Yeah. So but this is great. Like, this is what, all the kind of shit that everybody's bitching about. And it's like, now here it is. I hope people go out and buy these things. Is that is it a doll that's, like, on the shelves? Or is it they just got their own personal doll? Oh, no. It'll be for sale. Awesome. Yeah. These are heroes. These are people. Yeah, I know superheroes are great, and we love them. But these are actual 
lifesavers. By the way, I think the the I think I think hotter than a normal Barbie. Just just for my two cents. Not that this is based on hotness. Looks like she's. I guess that's her glasses. It looks like she's wearing like a superhero mask. Yeah. Yeah, those are glasses. Yeah, yeah well, that's good. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. Doesn't hurt with what I'm going for. But yeah, like I I'm gonna buy my kid this thing. It's a good one. Yeah. You gotta get the whole set. Is there six of them? Well, let's take it easy now. Those times are hard. Uh, you get, you see now, you're discriminating. You gotta <laughs> get all of them. She's only gonna th strip them naked and throw them on the. F They're all gonna be wind up being beat up by Hulk and Captain America anyway. The way the insanity rolls in this house, so that's kind of true. You know, it, it, we're just basically saving uh, the whole uh, the whole thing. What's um, the price tag on those things? Oh, uh, Barbies are like seventy five dollars now. Are they really? No, no like a regular not Barbie. They're not that bad, but like the fancier Barbie, you can get like the shitty Barbies for like twenty bucks. Like if you're just walking down a regular toy store, not like the ones with like, you know, the huge princess dresses and the car and all that shit. Just a regular Barbie. Yeah, bucks. like like a regular Barbie. I uh, let me look now. I just bought one. I should know. I guess I, like a regular Barbie, like just the Barbie with like whatever outfit. Couple she, little accessories. She's wearing. In the box. Yeah, I think that's like twenty bucks. Yeah, that's not bad. Still runs you like twenty bucks. It's not a bad price for that. But, like, if you buy one, like, any, like, the themed ones, like, uh, then they start to go up in price a little bit. Aren't they all themed? Um, no, Not, like, just, like, Nurse Barbie or, like, Beach Barbie. Not oh, those. Like, specific ones. Like, yeah, uh, you, yeah, Presidential it, Barbie. Or right. Whatever. Yeah. And then you yeah. can get into some, some heavier ones. And you uh, can't open it or else it'll decrease its value. Yeah, try telling a kid that. <laughs> My brother and I did that. We have all these. We had all these Star Wars figures. They're like, "Can we play with them?" No. What do we do? We just store them. Okay. Like, look, like here's like Lucille Ball Barbie. Oh, that's got to be pricey, right? And that, yeah, that like that's what I'm talking about. And then there's like Beach Collection Barbie, and then this one's like I don't even know what this is. I don't know what's happening here. That's but, a, that's a dude, I think. Xena the Warrior Princess Bar. I don't even know. There's Nurse Bar. Like there's complicated ones. Those are definitely pectorals. I think that was a dude. Uh, here, let me see. Yeah, okay, so the Barbie signature 1973 Doctor is $50. But it, okay. Let's see. Oh, Undersea King. That's the, that's the dude one. That was the dude. Undersea King. They don't want to say uh, Aquaman or uh, Poseidon. Basically. Okay. Don't sue us, DC Comics, Undersea King. <laughs> It's basically when you go to like uh, Party City and you see that that costume with the weird name and it's like All right, this is obviously Thor. They don't want to say it. Yeah. It's like uh, Scandinavian god with hammer. It's like okay. Yeah. By the way, there's exclusive member Barbies. Like you have to be a Barbie member just to get the, the whole Barbie. world of Barbie is so weird. Like they there's Barbies out there that are worth thousands. There's a curvy brunette Barbie that's $20, a 1977 superstar Christie Barbie that's $40. And you know what Barbie is $241, Frank? Which Barbie is that? The Star Wars X Barbie Galactic gift set. That is $241. Wait, all three together? Yes. Star all right, so she's three C3PO, Stormtrooper, and Princess Leia. Yeah, that's something. It's not even the characters. It's bar. It's like if Barbie was to dress up and go to a Halloween costume party with wearing Star right. Wars shit. Right, right, right. Two hundred and forty-one dollars. So now, you, if you bought that, do you, do you, do you kids play with them, or you just? Yeah, I don't but, think that's the kind of toy you play with. But this, no, you can't. But this is the problem. So like, if like, so my kids like going on Amazon and like looking at stuff. Mm -hmm. They know like it's like ingrained in their head. They can tell which one's twenty bucks. They don't want that one. They want the one that's not. like one hundred and seventy-five dollars, and they're yeah, listed they on the same page. They look better, and they got more shit, and it's Star exactly. Wars, and it's all this other crazy stuff. Exactly. All Toy right, Barbie. Uh, masks and such. Masks coming back in a big way. Storming back right now. Yep. Losing it to the masks. Um, McDonald's, which Home I have Depot. No problem. I got no problem wearing masks. You know, the shit that, that you're avoiding by wearing a mask, I'd rather wear the mask. I know. I hate it, though. Too bad. I was down. I, I wore my mask the whole time. Uh, you know, yeah. then I got the vaccine, and I, eh, I don't want to go back to that. Well, 
once everybody gets vaccinated and uh, we can get a handle on this thing, maybe we can get back to normal. But, you know, once this, this, this thing keeps spreading and mutating and spreading, you know, we're not going to it's, it's just going to keep going. It's weird, though, because, again, I don't I honestly I don't know if the, I, I hear what you're saying. I just don't know if that's the thing, because as it's we've not been, helping as we, it's not helping. But as we've been learning, the vaccinated people are also spreading it as well to a less to a degree. less degree and you're not getting as sick from it if well, I well that's it the thing you, if we'll everybody be fine if everybody was vaccinated it wouldn't matter how much we were spreading it around right but it they would be still, like getting but, the cold or whatever. but they're still kind of studying that because even if you get it who knows what the law lo- i don't even know like, there's still so yeah. much to learn about this whole but thing. getting it unvaccinated or getting it vaccinated i'd rather get it vaccinated if once you get it unvaccinated you're in you go to the hospital, you get intubated, you get, it's not a fun thing to get. If you get it while, if you're vaccinated and you contract COVID, chances are you'll be fine. Well, did you see the guy? Now there's a story every other day about somebody who's not vaccinated, who got it, who now regrets being, that's the story yeah. now. I see it all the time. That's what they're, that, this is what the media is pushing. By the way, just because the media is pushing it, which they are, it's getting precedent over a lot of other stories. Doesn't mean that it's still it's happening. Like it, it does happen. It's I mean, happening it's not like a lot. It's not happening. Right. I'm it's making it up. They got these guys, these people on camera telling their story, and it's like, yeah, it's going to be a lot easier a situation if you get COVID yeah. and you're vaccinated. Your immune system is now ready to fight it. But I saw this one guy. Did you see this one guy? Here's this kind of pissed me off. This was a CBS story. And they're doing the, it's the typical, you know, the guy's got the vid and he's complaining. Yeah. After nearly a month in a hospital bed, we asked can't hear it. They can't hear it? Uh, it's very low on my end. All right. The guy, here. Can I ask him when you're, hold on. The guy asks him, he has been able to move for months, this, this fucking guy. He can't move for months. The reporter asks him when you're able to. When you're out of this, because he's he's in the bed, he's, this is horrible, this is awful. He's like, are you going to get the vaccine? This is this guy's answer. Hospital bed. We asked Alan if he'd changed his mind about getting the shot. When you're able medically to get the vaccine, will you get it? Uh, on a percentage basis, probably 90% yes. I still have that little bit of what the heck's going on. That kind of doubt is all too how he just finished saying this is horrible i can't move i can't he's See, that got question of what the heck's going on yeah now 90 percent, he's gonna get it right he's probably he's gonna get it he said that but that 10 percent of what's going on like what's your question like how what, what is this i mean the question is most likely which is the most probably the most po- common question for people who don't want to get the vaccine is What's the long-term effect of the vaccine? Right. I don't want anything bad to physically happen of to Of course. Me, which is Same understandable. Here. But when the but, worst has happened to you physically, you would think that would be like, no, I'm 99%. I'm yeah. going in. I'm getting it. So when, every, you know, the vaccine is not something they came up with overnight. They've but been here, researching this stuff for years. Here's the thing. Decades. Though. Here's the thing. Before you finish saying what you're going to say. We say this. And it makes sense. Yet, I know personally, and I'm sure if you think about it, you know too, people that smoked all their lives, had a heart attack, came this close to dying, I'll never smoke again. Three years later, they're right back to it. It's a little bit different only because it's an addiction. I get, I kind of, you know. But my point is, is that we don't always make the right decisions for ourselves. True, true, true. true. When it comes to these situations. If you have doubts, if you're an unvaccinated person who's doubting the vaccine, I, you know, I understand. I get that. But talk to your doctor. Right. Look at, go to the CDC website. Read up on everything. That's different than, you know, you now know that you are one of the people that can't handle this that when you get this virus it's gonna knock you on your ass for months for months and might kill you and you're still at 90 percent like i don't i don't understand i mean this there's a there's when a vaccine comes out historically 
there's a disease, we create a vaccine. The side effects or the long-term effects are usually discovered within the first half a year of the vaccine's uh, you know, um, injection, you know, the first trials and stuff like that. This vaccine's been around a while and it's only improving, you know, when they do research, whatever. And it's fine. I don't even know if they're improving it, but they're, they have the vaccine. It's working. It's keeping people out of the hospital. If you're vaccinated and you get COVID, you're not, you're probably not going to go to the hospital with it. You'll, you, you report it to your doctor. Yeah. I have a few symptoms, you know, blah, blah, blah. Stay quarantined. Fine. And you'll probably, I mean, I don't, I'm not, you, you really know, want everybody to get vaccinated. I just feel like if we did, we would get ahead of this thing so much, so much faster. It's kind of like flat earth. Here's a comparison. If everybody got on board with round earth, we would move a little, everybody together can move forward. But the f people who keep saying flat earth, flat earth, they're just going to get left behind when it comes to scientific discussion. So people who don't want to get vaccinated, I understand there's trepidation. You don't want to put anything in your body that you don't trust, but you don't know better than the people, than the scientists that are making the vaccine and have studied it and yeah. the people that are doing genome sequencing and, and the people that know this vaccine and are taking it themselves and are giving it to our, our, our leaders. All of our leaders have it. Well, I think also people are un unfairly critical of doctors and science because the rules keep changing. And the, th the thing I, the thing, oh, we lost Frankie C there. Uh oh, we'll try and get Frankie C back. What I was going to say was the thing with the rules change, the rules changing all the time is because, you know, they're doing research and the the more oh here we go frank's back all right okay. hey buddy you what blacked out for a minute i kept talking oh is that i don't right? know which i don't know which one of us made it to air <laughs> i think i was still i don't even know where we're still well, well let's keep going My, yeah, what, go. what i was saying was is the rules keep changing because the facts keep changing because sure. the more they study this the more they're realizing like for instance they said get the facts here you don't have to wear a mask anymore now we're discovering because of this other thing that may not be the case my fear is is that they're going to wind up or they're going to attempt to shut everything down again which i think would be a gigantic mistake and i i think we went through that time again everybody who wants to be vaccinated is va everybody who wants to protect themselves is protected you have a little bit more time to get even more people protected which i think the more people we could do the better great but after that at a certain point you can't stop life because some dick wants to read Facebook and make a poor decision because those people are around everywhere, no matter what. Now, I know you want to save everybody and you would do nearly anything no. to save everybody. But here's my other problem. Is that not true, though? Sure. I, yeah, I don't want half the country to die. OK, neither do I. But I'm saying you would you probably care a little bit. You probably do more than I well, would do. Well, here's the other part of it. Let's say you have a grandparent who's vaccinated and but they're sick. You know, they have some kind of issue with their lungs, whatever it is, cancer, anything. You are vaccinated against COVID as well. This person who's not vaccinated has COVID, walks into your store, gives you COVID, and you go home and give it to your sick grandparent. Now, it might not be as severe because they're vaccinated, but it's certainly not the best situation to have if they're sick. It's not going to help their lung situation. So if I have a sick person in my house, I got to go out and get COVID from someone who has a really bad case of it. I know. I, yeah, no, look, I understand. But if everybody's vaccinated, you're doing the best you can. You're doing the best you can. You can't, I'm doing the best I can, but I got to worry about some other schmuck coming but, up to me. And give it but to I'm me. saying we can't lose restaurants, businesses, entertainment. We can't lose all those things. I understand that. But we also can't lose half the country either. 
I, I don't think we're going to lose half the country. We can't lose a quarter of the country. We can't By lose way, thousand. What we already lost six hundred thousand people. Agreed. It's a shame, and I, I, everybody who's dying because of fucking false information on the internet is a shame. It's that's heartbreaking. the worst part of this, and it's horrible. But I really feel like when push comes to shove over the next couple of months, we're going to see a lot more people get the vaccine as I we head so. into the fall. Um, what I wanted to say was, too, is that uh, in New York City, let me see here, New York City next month, gyms, restaurants, and theaters will require vaccines to, to enter those locations. Right. What's interesting about this is, and here's, what, here's the basic main reason why I brought it up. It wasn't to hammer home the same stuff we've been saying. Um, it, but the real reason I brought it up is this is interesting now where you have businesses leading the charge over government. So for the people that are like, you're infringing on my freedoms and you can't do this. Here's this. What's happening right now, which, again, I don't love, but is happening. Businesses are saying without any sort of nudging or well, mandate. Is the government from, mandating this? No. No, uh, they're the ones saying these are going to be the rules in our businesses. So um, they all came together and said this. How does that work? No, no. Walmart and Target is now requiring masks for employees, not customers just yet, but employees in areas where the virus transmission rates are high. McDonald's is requiring masks for both employees and customers. Home Depot's mask mandate is now nationwide. Amazon said August 6th that all workers in its warehouse would need to mask up starting today, August 9th. Previously, employees were only required to wear masks if they have not been vaccinated against the ma uh, against the uh, virus. So you're having you're starting to see businesses now without any government interference make some of these decisions. Good. And it's okay. going to be tough for the people that are arguing about their rights and infringement when businesses have these policies. Because, again, this is their right. A lot of Republicans, though, have issues because they're like, you can't do this. You can't force us on no, this. No sh it's the same thing as no shirt, no shoes, no service. Exactly. Because they're and they're also free market people. And you know what? If they people want to run their business like this, this is how they want to yeah, run. Don't their come business. to my business. Yeah. Although you know what, I did find this interesting. Uh, Rogan made uh, Rogan made some news the other night. He said something. He said something to the effect of the virus is still transmissible even if you're vaccinated, and that doctors were like texting him data because they were afraid to come forward with it for fear of being canceled. Which I don't believe. I mean, I believe he probably got a message or two, you know, but I don't. I don't really like if a doctor has new scientific scientific information you got to report that even if it's contradicting to what most people want to hear yeah. you, you got exactly you got yeah, the first that. person you go to isn't joe rogan you, you got to say you go that. to is cdc or whoever is in charge of this stuff right but but their their hope was that rogan's got a huge audience if they give it to him he'll get it out there and then it'll become thing i don't ha hate the, the strategy there Fine. but that's not why i brought it up why i brought it up is because rogan then said the problem with these politicians are if they get this power, they're not going to give it up. And I had a real problem with that because that's bullshit. Yes, I had I would have agreed with him a year ago, was a little concerned about a lot of the things that were being done in the in the interest of public health. But when you look at everything that happened, all the politicians gave up the power. Some were forced into it like Cuomo. He didn't want to give it up and the state legislator took it away from him. But my point is, is the system works. America works, right? Checks and balances, uh, uh, judicial, legislative, yeah, and nobody, yeah. executive, like all those branches check. They, it all works. Like everybody gave the power back. Yeah, because the goal, everybody has a focus on a goal here. And the goal is to go back to normal life where right. we don't have to wear masks and we get all... Now, to some whatever. different degrees, like some worse than others that the guy in who's... I always just confuse News, Newsom. California has been having a shitty there. I don't even know what they're doing They're So some worse than others, but for the most part, everybody that put in these, these stringent mandates and laws and rules during the pandemic, they have all come back. So this idea of like, once you give these people power, which I would normally agree with. And I really agree with when it comes to executives, uh, you know, like president or governor, 
still america works like you know what i'm saying like they they figured out a way whether it was cuomo and they took it back or other states who gave it back you even have that fucking asshole in arkansas who passed the law going the other way and an felt idiot. shitty about it and wanted to take it back whatever it is it worked we did what we had to do and we went right back to normal so yeah. i would say to people especially rogan in this particular instance the experiment works believe in the believe in the setup because it fucking it worked yeah we have people that'll knock it you know you try to grab power in some crazy ass way yeah there are people that will check will check that power yeah and you know when it's a public health emergency you gotta listen to you know the leaders are, are there for a reason they're they're you know they they have more information they're our representatives and they're telling us this is what we need to do in order to combat this thing and they have the sci they listen to the scientists or the ones that listen to the scientists are telling us the scientists told us we got to do this so we're implementing this yeah it's a public health emergency we're not doing this because you know it's the chicken pox no we're doing it because it's killed 600,000 americans yeah and we're the worst country by the way with our numbers around yeah, the world oh yeah. But again, and here's the other thing, like some people would say that Trump tried to, you know, uh, not upheave, but Trump tried to stay in office unlawfully, right? He's not president now. The system no. worked. System worked. The system worked. Like, and I, I believe in that. Like, I, I, I really believe, I, do I so, believe people are going to take their shots like, like Trump or Cuomo? I agree. They are. Yeah. For the most part, I feel like the system is, is going to work. Yeah. Well, you know what? We had an election and he was voted out. And By the way, it works. if Lincoln doesn't do some. Some of the stuff that Lincoln did to this day, don't he, we don't even know if it would have been legal. The Emancipation Proclamation. That whole him saying that slaves are, are free, him freeing the slaves. He basically was admitting that they were uh, that slaves were um, property, which he didn't agree with, but he had to do that in order to to free. Like so, everything that he did there was like contradicting, and it didn't make any sense. And he was stretching over what the executive branch at the time was capable of, but he did it all. And you know what? It, it worked out the way it was supposed to work out. You know what I'm saying? So right. you gotta trust the system sometimes. Sometimes you, you got it. And in this case, when it's a public health emergency, we have things in place to respond to it. And it's a plan. We have to go along with the plan. Yeah, you're going to have doubts. I get it. But, you know. Well, the Patriot Act post 9-11, I think everybody would agree that was a big mistake, right? Yeah, I mean, kinda... exactly. I, I, it's, yeah, we, we screw but things yeah. up sometimes. I get it. But. But that ran its course. Yeah, I mean. I, I just think we we asked for a solution. They gave one. They gave one to us. Not a not a. Is it a perfect solution? No, it's not going to be a hundred percent. You know, but the more we can stick to it, I think it's going to be better for everyone. That's my opinion, and that's what they're saying. So I they know more than I do. I don't know the science behind vaccines better than the scientists do they know you don't even doing. know that coats belong on coat racks and not hair curlers i mean so there's a lot for you to learn that, right exactly i don't know what i'm doing with this thing i love by the way i appreciate and we don't bring it up much anymore but we still get the comments of people who tune in just to see what's on the coat rack it's the only reason i watch <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Barstool Sports and Major League Baseball. This is super interesting to me. Uh, Major League Baseball, they, they have uh, three deals going right now. Fox, Turner, and TNT, uh, and ESPN. So Fox, TNT, and ESPN are carrying Major League Baseball games. ESPN opted out of buying Monday and Wednesday games for Major League Baseball. So now Major League Baseball is trying to sell those packages to somebody else. All right, what do they want for them? Fox and Turner can, can take it, yes, but this idea that Barstool, this was leaked today by Andrew Marchand, that Barstool Sports is in negotiation to carry those games is incredibly interesting in the evolution of the internet because you have what was a side project blog, 
you know, that this guy basically started in his parents' house to now they may be carrying Major League Baseball games in just 17 year or 14 year, whatever it is. That's crazy. Yep. That's crazy growth. And uh, they, Barstool just signed a deal to their first bowl game. So they're going to be broadcasting the Arizona Bowl. It's going to become the Barstool Bowl. Um, and now they're in talks to, now I don't know if they're going to get them because you have like Hulu and you have, uh, YouTube even ha- has been known to show some yeah, and other networks. Events. And you know, what's crazy. If it was Barstool, they would be popping it through YouTube. I mean, I guess they would basically just be putting it on their site, but I would guess that they would be funneling it through all their social media networks too. Unless they just want to put it on their site and that's that. I mean, why would they give Maybe. YouTube the no? I don't know. But the other interesting aspect of this is uh, Barstool just a couple of years ago was bought by Penn National, which is one of the largest casino operators in the country. And Penn National just purchased the score, which was a Canadian gambling uh, site. It's like stats and gambling and everything. So now you have content, gambling, stats, and Major League Baseball all converging in one place. Like, this is a whole new thing. This is no longer, like, tune into the game. And now, you're a Mets fan. I'm a big Mets fan. 162 games of the year. I got kids. We do the podcast. I mean, if I watch, like, 40 games, it's a lot, you That's, know? If I watch three, right. it's a lot. Because they're boring. I mean, baseball yeah. and baseball is primarily watched by baseball fans, whereas NBA or NASCAR or something have a casual fan tuning in to kind of check it out if there's a big storyline going on or whatever if you could gamble on the game in game right there all in one place like imagine if you're watching on your phone and the little thing pops up it's like do you want to bet if this guy's going to hit a home run singular and you could put a couple bucks on it and now that becomes incredibly interesting and more enticing yeah it's got to be legal everywhere though i mean well, it, which it's becoming. I mean, yeah. every state is eventually once since soon as they turned off that rule that only Vegas could have it or whatever it was that that old gambling rule. It, all the states are basically turning on gambling. They're all doing. That's it. true. I think there's like eleven states now where you can fully go on like an app and bet on something. So, can we do any of that? I don't think we can. Not in New York. Jersey can. Jersey can. Scumbags, but That's Jersey can. <laughs> Pennsylvania can. We're going to be the last ones. I bet. Well, Connecticut, you can do it because they got the casino. Well, that's just on the Indian reservations. So, yeah, I don't. Th- yeah, we can't do. We could gamble at casinos, but not table games, which is a weird rule. All, all, yeah, all our non. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Indigenous people casinos. All the non-indigenous people casinos are all basically just lottery games. Right. They're all basically just lotto games. Um, but this is super interesting to me because, like, a lot of, uh, like, do you still play cards? Uh, like, we got to, there's, like, still so, your brother, I think, and Nick, me, a couple of our friends will still play, like, virtual card games just to kind of, like. Just to pass, you know. Yeah. Keep your chops up. Yeah. And so now, like, if you're doing that on whatever, you might just, you might, oh, let me go and make a couple of bets on the on the baseball game while it's on, on a Monday. That is an interesting uh, concept. And th- and that's the perfect game to sell them too, like the Monday and Tuesday game or with Thursday game, whatever. Because who gives a shit about those? You know, it's not like you're on a weekend, you know, I have a beer, I'll have some peanuts and watch the game, you know. Right. It's the least probably viewed games that uh, the way to get baseball has. That's the way to get an audience. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about Obama at all? I don't really care. Everybody made such a big deal about his stupid party. I, he had a I, party in a place with low whatever. Um, yeah, I'm not defending the guy. I'm just saying I don't give a shit. I find it interesting that the same. I understand right wants to hate the left. and the, the But these are the same people that are fighting for everything to be open and ha- everybody be open and back to it. But they're pointing fingers at Obama. Plus, I get it. Plus, he lowered the numbers drastically. And it was that uh, I'm not buying. That's kind of bullshit. You went from like 600 to 500. Like, give me no, a. No, I thought it was like I thought it was very low. I thought it was like 100 and something. Supposedly it was 200. Now they're saying 400 people gathered. All right. Well, 
it was in Martha's Vineyard. Yes. And they're a low rate over there now. I guess it's perfectly so. fine if you don't have masks and stuff. I don't know. But it was outdoors. Outdoors and in a low transmission rated area. It's not like they went to California, which where it's high, right? Or in Florida yeah, where it's really I high. Just hate, I hate how politicized this is all. It's outdoors. Like outdoors. they just had Jazz Fest down in New Orleans. It was outdoors. There was thousands of people there. Like, st- like I get you want to nail the left. I get it. But... Like, we all want to just move the fuck on from all this shit. Can we stop politicizing everything? Everything. Literally everything. Oh, it's it's, it's exhausting. Yeah. I mean, if this was a couple of months ago, I would be like, hey, the optics of this aren't great. Like, we're not out of it yet. Not everybody's vaccinated yet and all this and that shit. But it's like... People are doing things now. I mean, we're at... We're going to concerts are back. People are having concerts. Thousands of people. Yeah. But they had... By the way, there is just a trillion... Sh- oh, but were the people smoking pot there? Oh, yeah. People are smoking pot there, too. There is just billions and billions of paparazzi. Like, they had to know. Like, here, I'll scroll through for people that are watching. There's just, like, one pop... There's a couple people smoking pot. They got Obama dancing. There's just one paparazzi shot after the next. Oh, was that food? How'd that food, food look? Uh, I got some shrimp in there. Rice. Well, shrimp doesn't look salad. that great. I thought that would be better. Yeah, some watermelon in the back. Uh, I'm not really sure what the that rest of it is. a bag of, of chips? There's a fucking bag of Cape Cod chips right there. Look at that. They are right in Martha's there. Vineyard. Is that close to Cape Cod? I'm not really sure. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's a local thing. Uh, finally, Frankie C., this is huge news. Banger hanger alert for everybody. Come in on Friday. Let me put the banger hanger alert over here. We've got some new music coming. We will have it in the banger hanger. Oh, boy. Lizzo and Cardi B are teaming up to drop a new track this Friday, the 13th, Ooh. called Rumors. Rumors. Yeah. All right. I'm in. See what they got. I love Lizzo more than I love Cardi B, and you know I love Cardi B. Yeah, I'm not too from. I, I love Car- Cardi B's great. I don't, I'm not too familiar with Lizzo's music. Oh, she's good. No, I yeah, no, I. She plays the jazz no flute better than Ron Burgundy. That I, I need to see. That is fifty percent of it. She literally does play the jazz flute really no, well. I <laughs> that I know. I haven't heard it, but I'm sure she does. Yeah, I like Lizzo. That one album she had, or maybe it was two. I don't know. Last couple of years, she's just had some. She's had some bangers. She's had some absolute hey, killers. This is why. It's a banger hanger alert. Yeah, absolutely. Be there. I don't know who I love more, Cardi B or Nicki Minaj. This is close. Hmm. I mean, Frankie Minaj will always hold a special place in my heart. So that kind of puts Nicki Minaj up a couple of slots. I might have to go Minaj then. Yeah. yeah. Cardi B, she's got a few a few good tunes. I mean, they both have some really catchy songs, but I don't know. It's, a, it's neck and neck. Yeah. I rarely get excited about music. I'm excited about this. Like, I'm like, oh, this Are is... You? Yeah. I think it's going to be good. I've, I haven't heard... I haven't heard, like, good new music in, in a couple of weeks. That's it's true. Been, what's, it's... what's the last new thing that came out and we were like, yes. I... For me, I mean... Oh, I Metallica? No, not Metallica. Jerk. Um, what's it called? Um... Why am I blanking? I, well, you're thinking of that. I cried over the new Dave Matthews song that they played in concert the other night about the you pe- cried. people in Italy. Uh, well, Dave cried, and I felt I got feels. He wrote a song about the people in Italy at the beginning of the pandemic. They were singing to each other out the windows. So it, was, it was quite the moment. It was his first show back after not touring and everything like that. And I was excited about that. I was listening to that track. It's pretty good. But I don't expect people to... I, I, you didn't see me push it on the show. I didn't bring it up. I don't expect people to be too excited about it. You just brought it up. Well, because <laughs> like, I was trying to buy you time. I was trying to, uh, you nice. know, admit an embarrassing oh, thing to cover up whatever Metallica news you're going to tell First us. First of all, it's nothing to do with Metallica. But I think a couple of weeks ago, we did a banger hanger. The last new song that I was excited about was Iron Maiden came out with a new, yeah. a new song. And That's it was, embarrassing. Shut up. It's called The Writing on the Wall, and it kicks ass, by the way. The video is pretty good with it, too. It's like an animated video, and 
It's like it's what we were talking about before. It's like post-apocalyptic type of video. Right. That's good. I recommend it for any metalheads out there. Have you watched the documentary on Woodstock on HBO yet? Nope. Yeah, you got to watch that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. going to go watch it. You got anything else? Happy if you are. All right. Well, this is a long show. Jesus, I didn't realize how long this one went. Come on now. We put it away. Got things to do. Yeah, you do. You're a busy man. All right. The possible return of Jay Sabs and her Atlantic City escapades on the next show, maybe, or Friday. I don't really know. Who the hell knows when she's coming back? I didn't even know she was there until today. I mean, if I were her, I wouldn't come back. Why would you? Do the show from there. She should do a live thing. I said, can you uh, like on the beach? Check it if you want. And obviously, she didn't. Do a five minute thing. She didn't check in the Sabs. I know. She's probably too busy gambling. You don't know what time it is when, you, when you're there gambling. If you're not wearing a watch, you can't pull out your cell phone as often as you think. And there's no clocks anywhere. Again, I missed, I missed those days where you would go in at like 6, 7 o'clock. And then you would look at your watch and you were like, holy shit, it's 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, I don't even you, wear you, a watch. You look at it and go, Wait, it must be like midnight or 1. And you're like, oh my God, it's 4.30 in the morning. I've been sitting you here. feel exactly the same. Yeah. You didn't get tired at all. Yeah. It's no, amazing. No time in those places. All right. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching and are listening. Um, AnthonyDanAir.com. All our links and information. Remember to subscribe. Remember to hit the like button on Facebook or YouTube. They care about that. I don't, but it's important to them, so it's I important care. to us. Frank cares a little bit. Frank cares about everybody and everything. I want everybody to be happy and healthy. You do, don't you? I don't want to see people get sick. That's terrible. Neither do I, but I, I have a... You have more of a tolerance. I, I tend to lose... I tend to lose... I feel like I have a good amount of patience... But it runs out for me. I don't know if yours ever runs out. Runs out. I just don't flip out about it. I just go, eh, all right. <laughs> and I can't talk to you anymore, so that's that. <laughs> I don't yell. I don't get crazy. I just go, eh, there's no point anymore. No. Talk to I, you later. I've never seen you get upset, actually, now that I think about it. Rarely. If Unless... I get upset, it's... When I played hockey, I got upset. That's every true. Every now and then. When actually, someone... that's true. Ah, oh, there was this one thing that people did. When I was I was a goalie, and when we played hockey, and it was during practice, when someone would, you know, I'm stopping, you know, people are uh, doing like a scrimmage drill or whatever, and they're shooting and block, 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 block. One guy gets one goal in, taps me on the helmet. Yeah, like, you hated like that. A little, like a little fuck you. And I, I remember chasing a kid, <laughs> one of our teammates. Uh, he, he got a goal in on me and he just, as, as went after, right after he scored, he just went right on my helmet, like a little, little middle finger. And I fucking chased him around the ice. Couldn't catch him, but I could, I was chasing him. <laughs> By the way, I tapped you on the helmet once and you got upset with me yeah, over that. It's a dick move. I didn't think it was a dick move at the time. And then you were like, How I don't is that like not that. a dick move. I just scored on you. You're on your, you're flat. You're on your ass trying to make the save. Yeah, but I don't I think score I score on you and it's a little. I don't think I tapped on you because I scored on you. Because even in practice, I rarely ever scored. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I tapped your helmet. And you got really mad at that. So yeah. I, from, then on, from then on, I kept it to the pads. I just tapped your pads. Tapping the pads is a respectful thing. Tapping the helmet after you get scored on is like a, oh, yeah. It's like a kick you while you're down kind of thing. <laughs> That's what it was. But okay. That's what it felt like. So hockey and when you're sleeping are the only two times you really oh, get Oh, when upset. I'm sleeping, my poor wife, I, I start swinging. <laughs> Actually, a week or so ago, I punched myself in the face. <laughs> in my dream, I was pulling on something. And I was trying to, and I went, and my wife was laying next to me. And I was doing this. And I kept hitting myself in the face. <laughs> and my wife woke me up. Frank, you're, you're punching yourself. I'm like, what? I, I don't know what I was pulling. I was pulling sheets or something, blank, and I just kept hitting myself like this. So she woke you up, and she then you realized, me. oh, I was really punching myself in the. F and then that's how really you knew you were pulling something in the dream. No, I remember the dream. I was pulling something, 
I don't remember punching myself in the face. She woke me up and said, Frank, you're punching yourself in your face. And I went, oh, shit. My hands were up here. I went, oh, God. I wasn't really like, bam. I was just doing this, like hitting myself. Uh-huh. Do you think you should see like a doctor or somebody or gotta, like talk to somebody s- about this? Strap me down in bed or something. I don't know what the, it's, you know what it is? My dreams, I never, I don't get this, but my, my wife, she could tell when she's dreaming in, in, her, in her dream. Yeah. I can never, I never know that I'm dreaming. Right. No matter what's going on, I 100% think it's real. I could be flying. I could be doing things that defy every law of physics. And I will think it's 100% real. And I just get so into it. And like if I throw a punch or if I kick. or A lot of times it's hockey related. I'm playing hockey and I go to make a save and it's a violent move. And, uh, you know. <laughs> And in my so, dream, I, I, I muster up this energy to make this safe. Okay, so you're, it's not always a fight. You're not always being attacked. No, no. Okay, oh, I didn't know. Because I feel like if you're always being attacked, you maybe have to talk to somebody, get something loose up in the back there. That No, it's what usually is- a, a movement that I make with a lot of energy. When I do that, the energy kind of manifests in, when I, uh, in real life yeah. while I'm sleeping. And it just comes out. You know, like you know, I go to make a save. One time I made a save. I went like this. And I got my wife right across the neck. Uh, I felt terrible, but I just I went like that, and I, I made the save. That you know, but she woke up like, oh god! If that helps, I chopped her right across the throat. I, I didn't mean to. Being violently attacked in my sleep and like that can't be a comfortable. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's like it's like once a month, maybe a little less. I don't do it on purpose, I swear. I know you don't do it on purpose, but that's that seems I feel like now we have all these plastic dividers at restaurants, maybe we should get one in between you and your wife at the bed there. Just just hit a button, it just lowers down. Like <laughs> like a like a limousine divider. Have you ever thought about going with the Morty Seinfeld not Morty Seinfeld with the Frank Costanza? Frank Costanza move, get the separate, separate beds. beds. Nah. We don't have the room in a in a bedroom for two beds, but also, I don't want. She, she, we, we wouldn't do that. We want to sleep in the same bed. We don't have the room in our bed. You have like a seventeen room house. It's just the well, two I of don't. you. Yeah, you do. You have a you have like two floors, three floors. How many floors is your house? That'd be your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I need business. I'm sure this is a place where you can put two. Beds. I'm not. I'm not sleeping in a separate bed from my wife. Okay. This, what is this? I love Lucy. Has she ever brought up the two bed thing? No. All right. I'm gonna text her. Make sure she's okay. I mean, I do that every day, every anyway. I just text her, like, you okay? She, she's just fine. Have you gotten hit in the throat lately? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. When the Rangers are in the in the playoffs, it gets really. Because <laughs> Frank this is thinks when I'm he, playing hockey. When Frank, I'm playing. Oh, I thought you dreamt like you were playing for the Rangers and we were watching them. No, all it's get like into it. it's like regular. You know, I'm playing at the local rink. You know, nothing, nothing crazy. I don't think I've ever dreamt. I may have dreamt once a, f- a couple times that I was playing like professionally, but it never like I don't think it was anything intense. It was, but it was like it was me, and it wasn't like a normal thing. I knew in my dream I was like, oh, this is so cool. I'm on the Rangers. Or I'm on the-. It was yeah. actually the Islanders. You and I were playing on the Islanders. Nice. That was a fun dream. That's a dream because I would never let you on my beloved team. Yeah, they suck. Um, we really have to go, but I do have to say this now because you got me thinking about it. Do you? I still have recurring dreams. I will have these dreams every now and then. Same exact dream, two different scenarios. One, I show up to the hockey rink. I'm in high school to play high school. Frank and I played on the same hockey team. Or the other scenario is I we went to the same grammar school, Frank and I. I show up to the eighth grade play at, at uh, in grammar school. But the same thing happens. I show up. I'm there. Everybody's there. And for whatever reason, I can't get dressed for the game or get into the costume for the play because I'm walking around. I'm talking to this one. I'm talking to that one or this happens. I run into this thing and then I'm I'm late now and I'm missing. Yes. The thing I I get that failed to show up really for the thing. I will have that every now and then I will have that exact dream again where I'm back in those places and I'm do I'm making the same fucking mistakes. Yeah, no, I take uh, same thing. I'm getting ready to go play a hockey game, and I'm just taking forever to put my pads on. And everybody's out there already. I'm like, oh shit, and I'm all behind. I'm stuck, and I gotta do. Yeah, it, it, and then I go out there, and I forgot my gloves, and I have to run back. And I, yes, 
Yeah, I had yes. that. I'm like, oh shit, I'm missing half my, you know. What is well, that? I don't know. It sounds like you're trying to like. I'm no dream expert, but it sounds like we're have a fear of being unprepared. Yeah. For stuff. I don't know. Then again, you know, maybe if we prepared for this show a little bit, we wouldn't have that fear anymore. We'd have a better show too. Nah, screw that. One day we'll get one right. The show's just fine. Do you know we passed 500 episodes? I th- or no, we were talking about 500 episodes. I think we passed 400 episodes. Hey, Shit. I would got the cake. I looked now and I was like, because you said to, we brought up 500 episodes and then you said to me like, oh, are we going to do that? And I was like, oh, I actually don't know. That would be cool. We got to know the milestones here. Give me some milestones. I know we really should. But here's the thing, though. Like there was a lot. of We did a lot. I did this show. Well, I feel like this show is you, me and Jay Sobs now. But there was in those four. There was a lot of them before. Right. We made this what it is now. So I don't really know if we should really start counting from the first one that count from the first one that we did together because then it's way shorter than 400 well it's been like a year and a half of this three times a week yeah what is that i don't know you do the math let me see here oh i'll be able to tell you right now hold on a second I mean, i'm gonna guess i feel like we hit 400 close to it three times a week for a year would be uh, 156 episodes. Uh, all right, add another half a year, about 200 episodes. Um, yeah, you think so? That's my guess. With the three of us, that's that's a an educated guess, I'll say. Yeah, now I can't figure. I know how to look at it on the computer. Now I can't figure out. I'm going to say around two, between two and 225. That's our, that's our range right now, I think. Yeah, it won't tell me how many on here. I don't really know how to look. I went to episodes. It's just showing me all the latest episodes. I don't know. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll look again on the, on the thing here. Name it. See if I can figure it out. Okay. Uh, the first, the first. Because I ha- now I had one that wasn't this particular podcast before this. Actually, there was like seven. Uh, but this one, the first one that we posted on this one was May of 2018. And even that's not even true because we I was posting these on, on YouTube prior to that too. So, Man, I don't know then. It's hard to really tell. All right, we're not going to bore the people with us yeah. trying to figure I'm this out. I'm bored at this point. I'm kind Thank of you all for watching or listening. We'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs> Got to figure out that ending. We just kind of... It's just... Yeah, <laughs> 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 fizzle out there. <laughs> Call that a fizzle ending. It was a fizzle ending. We have to do a dream episode, though. We really should do a whole episode on dreams. All right. I mean, I feel like everybody kind of already knows mine. I know, but I think that would be better than ghost uh, episode. Like the ghost episode, it'd be everybody doing the dream episode. Are they more? F- I feel like ghosts are more fascinating than dreams. Mm. I want to do another on 